It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee Ritchie's here, Andy Anako, uh, and, and of course, Alex Lindsay. We'll talk about the iPhone XS. It's been out for a while now, and people are starting to nitpick problems with charging, problems with wireless, and even problems with the camera. We'll even do a deep dive on what the iPhone camera is doing and how to get it to work better for you. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 630, recorded Tuesday, October 2nd, 2018. The squirrels aren't as sharp. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Slack. Slack is a collaboration hub for work to make sure the right people in your team are always in the loop and key information is always at their fingertips. Learn more at slack.com. And by IT Pro TV. Build or expand your IT career with flexible training and binge-worthy content from IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash MacBreak and use the code MacBreak30 to get a free seven-day trial and 30% off a monthly membership for the lifetime of your active subscription. And by Tres Pontas, premium quality extra virgin olive oil shipped directly to you from the Casablanca Valley in Chile. Visit trespontas.com slash MacBreak and use the code MacBreak and you'll save 20% off every bottle of olive oil in your subscription. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple. And the Apple team is in place. Mac Break Weekly Assemble uh, from Montreal. I should give each of you like a, an Avenger name. You know. Oh, I'm assembled, Leo. I'm assembled all over this show. <laughs> Renee Ritchie, imore.com. Can I do the nanite thing like Tony Stark and just hit my chest and have the armor just leap out? I would love that. Oh, I'd love that awesome. so much. Wouldn't that be awesome? I need it for the winter. It would be great. Where do you see my Halloween costume? Ooh. <laughs> Actually, I think I... Uh... I think I might have, have been, a little bit of it on yeah. my uh, on my blog. Oh, if you want to, was it, was, you, was it you in there? I saw, I saw something. I, I might have seen Lisa post Instagram. something interesting that earlier. Was, yeah. That was uh, that's me in there. Yeah, that's me, <laughs> that's me in that oh. real fine suit. He got you. <laughs> <laughs> you really want people to throw cantaloupes at you, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you think he's cute, and then he hits you with a lightning bolt, and it's just not fun. <laughs> but that's the best darn forty bucks I ever spent. I gotta say, that's uh, that that's, was only forty is it like bucks. A, is it like a sumo suit inside? Can you like wrestle in that thing? Uh, it's got a fan. It's inflated. Wow. And, and actually, I read uh, in the reviews, it's, somebody said, can I wear this to work? And they said, well, <laughs> you could maybe on your, you could on, your on your last <laughs> day, either <laughs> either because you know it's your last day or you know it's going to be your last day. <laughs> That's Andy and Otko, uh, formerly Chicago sometimes, now WGBH, Boston Public Radio. Enjoy our tote bags. Yes. <laughs> Get a free tote bag when you donate. And from the Pixel Core, Alex Lindsay in the Hello. house at Alex Lindsay, back from D.C. Yep. Nice to for see you. For the moment. For the nonce. Um, so here we are in week two of the iPhone XS. And as is often the case, there are a few little hitches, minor hitches. Gotchas. Gotchas. Um the big one right now is the charging issue, right? Somebody called it in the chat room, charge gate. I don't think it's risen to the gate. No, you got to gate everything, Leo. <laughs> if you mispronounce a word, it's, it's you know, it's a gate. I, I asked uh, Jason Snell about this uh, on uh, iOS Today uh, earlier, and he said, uh, yeah, Apple just figures you don't need to fast charge. It's an overnight <laughs> thing. I don't know. Is that the case? What, right. what do we know about this? So it was, what happened was some people noticed that when they plugged in their new iPhone XS, it wouldn't charge if it was already in sleep mode. If they woke it up, it began to charge fine. If it was already awake, it began to charge fine. If they wirelessly were charging it, it was fine. But if it was off and they plugged it in, it just looked like it wouldn't start charging until they woke it up. And then people started to say, hey, this is happening to me on my newly updated to iOS 12 iPhone or iPad. Uh, and, you know, videos were made, bodies were left strewn over Twitter. Uh. Um, 
And then today, Apple pushed out the new update for, well, not the new update, the new beta for iOS 12.1, which addresses it. And they said they found in their testing that some phones just wouldn't engage the charging system, sometimes for long periods of time. The wake up would sort of wake them up and literally get them to engage immediately. And what the fix does is just make sure that the second you put that cable in, that charge system is engaged. And then the other issue is that it doesn't seem to charge very quickly, certainly not with the, with the little dongle that comes in the box. No, the five water. Who yeah, uses the five that? water? But <laughs> but if you get the USB C twenty nine watt uh, charger, even then it's not a super fast charge. It'll charge it. So I mean, Apple is still super conservative in some areas, and one of them is battery and power management. Um, and you know, and you don't need to point to other vendors because every vendor has had issues with charging and with batteries over time. Uh, so what they do is that you'll find whole pages of scientists telling you why it is incredibly important to never charge wirelessly and never charge quickly because heat is the enemy of lithium ion and you are just wasting away precious seconds, maybe minutes of the lifespan of your battery over a three year period. Where I would argue, and I think many other people would argue that uh, for most people, the amount of convenience you get out over out of fast charging, even if it costs you like a week of battery life over three years, is fine. Yes. It's much more important to charge yes. quickly. So app, what Apple does is they will, they will allow it to charge fairly quickly up to 50% and then shunt it back down to normal charging because they ah. are sort of wary about the thermal damage that okay. it can do if it's hot. And they also recommend that if you really want to charge fast, take it out of a case or anything like that because the more heat that generates, the more damage it causes. And they monitor more for the heat than they do for the charge level. So these people are testing the 29 watt versus the, the whatever it is, uh, 5 watt or 10 watt. Um, they're looking at the uh, over a hundred percent, but really, if you looked at the first fifty percent, it would charge faster. Yeah, yeah. All right, significantly That's faster. That's probably it, what they, you want. You want to plug it. In. It's for when you like. Uh, when you're when you're down to five percent, and you got to you, you got you got to charge while you shave exactly. enough to get to the office, yeah. and that, that's perfectly fine. Exactly. Most most makers do something like that. It's it's there. It's I, I would love to see an engineer write a full book about. All the problems we are not aware of to make an ac a phone, a modern phone, actually work. Among them being, here's how we charge a battery so that it doesn't destroy all the electronics in the case <laughs> yeah. or kill or the battery within. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, yeah. and I, I it's, did. It's amazing. I, I admit, I, I did have that issue with the, with my mine. Um, does this thing work? You have the 10s Max. 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 And I plugged it in, and I came back later, and I was like, "Hey, it didn't do anything." And, and and so it was it was one of those things that I was like, "Well, I don't know what I did wrong." And I just, I, I of course, I turned it on, plugged it in, and it started charging. So I didn't think about it until the, until they started talking about it. But oh, it was, you had the sleep problem. Yeah, I had the sleep yeah, problem. And yeah. and uh, but I, you know, I figured, oh, they'll fix it. Uh, you know, it was one of those things. Like it became a big deal online, evidently. But I, I, I was like, oh, I'm sure they'll fix this in a dot one, or yeah, or they'll as, your, yeah. as they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just kind of like well, you know, like. But it's it's a. Um, uh, I think that overall, though, there, I guess I don't ever have it go down very much because I have. I think there's a culture within our company, at least, of having chargers everywhere. Yeah. Yes. So my phone has a charger. I've got a battery in my backpack. I've got things everywhere. And I needed it all until I took. I finally took Facebook off my phone. I didn't leave Facebook. I'm just, I still take it off. Check, but I just took it off my phone. And it's like, suddenly my battery lasts forever. I was like, I was like, this is, it used to be I had to charge a couple times a day. And now I'm like. Oh, you look at Facebook Messenger and the battery thing, and it'll say like five minutes on screen, three hours on oh. background. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It, it, there's, there's a reason why both platforms now do a form of battery shaming. Because both <laughs> uh, uh, people at Apple and people at uh, Google have both talked to me about how hard it is to convince developers collectively that we've given you some wonderful, simple rules to follow that will not kill the consumer's battery. And that's been uh, like a huge, huge program they've been trying to uh, enforce for the last two or three years. And the only thing that's working is making sure that the world knows, OK, guess what? Guess what, Facebook? We're telling everybody, everybody who complains about our battery problem is going to say, well, delete Facebook. That's like having a two-pound lead-acid motorcycle battery. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't do it for the, I didn't do it for the battery. Snapchat I just, too, I, yeah. I literally reached maximum Facebook last week with all the troubles that were happening oh, in DC. Never, I'm never, in the middle never. of it, so everyone there, everyone in the floor that I'm in, that's all they're talking about because oh. they're all press. You know, for the international yeah. press is all there, so that's all anyone's talking about. And then I go to Facebook, and that's all anybody's talking about. I was like, okay, I need to stop somewhere. I can't. Oh, move. there's so there's one more thing yeah. we should point out. Some people still obsess over like charging it to eighty percent, then letting it discharge to forty percent. And then never letting it get too high, never letting it get too low. Modern power management is really, really good. You don't have to do any of that anymore. You might, again, eke out a week, extra battery life over three years if you do micromanage it. 
But if you think about all the time it takes you, the effort and stress to micromanage it, you deserve that week of your life back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the other issue that's coming up a little bit, and I've seen a, a few stories about it, is uh, uh, problems with uh, data, uh, particularly Wi-Fi and cellular data. And that Lisa's having this with her iPhone XS Max. Uh, sometimes she'll have to reboot it a few times before she can really uh, get online. Uh, mine's not having any problems, uh, but I am I'm seeing people complaining about that. What do we know yeah. about that issue? They have gone 100% into Intel modem. So previously, I mean, uh, Infineon was the original iPhone modem supplier. And then Apple switched to Qualcomm when they went to CDMA because, long story short, Qualcomm just owns CDMA and a lot of LTE. Uh, but Apple and Qualcomm, well, Qualcomm and a lot of people have been having battles over really like the fairness of those patents and what is reasonable in terms of licensing fees. So Apple's been trying to move away from Qualcomm. They went halfway and switched all the GSM modems to Intel a couple of years ago. And this year they just switched all the modems to Intel. So if you've been using it on AT&T or on T-Mobile, most times in most places, you'll be getting better reception than ever because they're up to gigabit LTE and they're doing four by four MIMO, multi in, multi out. But if you were used to Verizon uh, and Sprint, you switched over to Intel. It has profoundly different characteristics. And for some people, it's it, some people say it's better. Some people say they are having problems connecting. Their data is going down, especially in fringe areas where you have a very low signal. There's no attenuation or detuning like an iPhone four days. Like you can't just put your finger on that new antenna thing and pause and <laughs> resume your your network connection. But people are lose. They are dropping down to 3G or they're you know they're having other problems. And my guess is similarly we'll see a carrier update or one of the 12 point zero or 12.1 updates will fine-tune it now they're collecting a ton of data from a ton of people i've i've noticed that uh, mine is having more breakup with my airpods you know like it's an odd you hear this like stereo fall apart and, and literally the phone's like in my pocket and i'm just hearing this this every once in a while you hear this like degradation in the airpod that i didn't have a week ago you know with my other it switched to bluetooth 5 i think yeah it just, i don't think i shouldn't cause a problem are we getting I new did. AirPods, by the way? <laughs> I thought we were good. <laughs> weren't we supposed to have new AirPods this year? We, I think we were supposed to have them at that event, and I think circumstances conspired so that we're not uh, having them for a while. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm wondering. I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to break apart the, uh, the the Qi charging phone case from now the uh, the AirPad because I haven't heard I haven't heard anything about how the actual uh, again chi wireless charging uh, AirPod case is hung up. And it seems like something that they want to get on. And they, it's, it's, it seems like the sort of thing where if they release it any time before December 20th uh, and have them in stores, they're going to have a very, very happy time with it. It'll be not just a, not not just money for them, but it'll also be a good, good thing to remind people that these things exist and that we're actually upgrading them. I'm, I, at this point, I'd be a little bit, not, not wary, but if I could hold off on buying AirPods f until, let's say, January – I would want to do that because I would want to see what they do, not just with wireless charging, but to see if they've got a new battery design or something else that's going to make it make it worth my while to wait. I think spring was the last I heard, and it's it's part of getting them with the new AirPods that have the sweat slash water resistance yeah. and uh, the onboard Siri parsing and stuff like that. Not, not this month during an iPad announcement. I mean, never yeah. say never, and they could always show them off or something. But the last I think the rumors were were springish. Spring, spring. yeah. Are they going to kill the uh, the wireless charger? Uh, everyone thought they were, and then you know, good old Guy Rambo found strings for it in iOS twelve point one. So wow. I just wow. I'll, I'll expect it when I see it. It's Gandalf to me now. I think yeah. I, I think I think about I, I go I go about sixty forty in favor. Uh, only I don't think they will cancel it outright, but I there, I think there's a possibility that the amount of time they've put into it has led them to basically take version two. What was going to be version two of this product make it version one so it might be that they might have to sort of announce something that's kind of supersedes it either just internal if if not externally at least internally it's it's a very weird situation but i i when i have conversations with people who let me at least <laughs> talk about this stuff on background it is the weirdest product cycle i have ever heard of <laughs> in terms of optimus being dead certain about something uh, in, uh, as they're de de as they're developing it, and then being dead certain of nothing at certain points during the during the process.
One of the interesting things that we could also talk about the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth and the cellular is that there are so many iPhones now and so many people using them with so many accessories that it seems like every time there's an update, like 1% of people get much better in performance, 99% are fine, and 98% are fine, and 1% get worse performance. And it's like a butterfly effect of reasons why. And you could go from being ter like being super upset to being super happy or being super fine to being super upset. And I, I don't know if that's just a question of scale and diversity in the ecosystem, but I think it, it's something that is soon as you tap one of them out, it seems like one other little thing comes up. And all I can say is the people who are super upset, it's, it's very unlikely they've ever actually developed a product of their own. <laughs> no <laughs> well, kidding. Okay. Yeah. That, that, no, that, that, that's absolutely true. But I mean, yeah, it's, this, it's, these, it's these are the, these are the pro I'm, I'm just saying these are the, these are the problems that, that, that you have to deal with when you're selling a thousand dollar phone. No, no, like I, I've bought, I've, I've, no, 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 let me finish my thought. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying that like I've, I've bought $90 phones. I have a $90 phone that's in regular rotation that I absolutely love. And I'm willing to forgive a whole bunch of stuff about it because it's a $90 phone. A thousand bucks. You don't want to, you don't want to find out, gee, why is my, why is my Wi-Fi like cutting out? And, and instead of uh, work working fine as uh, instead of my three hundred dollar phone from three years ago, and then go online and see uh, some some of the less re less responsible people writing antenna gate four volume four Apple Apple ref refuses to confirm problems uh, Wi Fi problems and new new release of iPhone XS. So I'm I, yeah I, I I always tell people. Who are who have complaints, uh, often legitimate complaints, in the first couple of weeks realize that there's a whole. This is a. This is not just a toaster where you plug it in and it works in the you know in the pre IoT era. It's 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 interaction between the the, the software, the firmware, uh, the 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 baseband, the hardware, and then the whole network. It's go, it's uh, it's working on plus the base station that's connecting to. It really does. I do think that almost every major release of hardware. Uh, iPhones included get much much better after a month, only because there's a whole bunch of fine tuning happening behind the scenes at Apple and outside of Apple that we can't see. And, and I think that it's, it's, I mean, definitely people should discuss it. But when people are like throwing, I see you see online, people are just like, "This is unacceptable," <laughs> blah 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 blah. And I'm like, "You definitely don't work in product development, also, you know, because you just but, you just understand that there's a fog of war. Of, of you're, yep. you're putting this stuff together, yeah. you're doing the best you can, and you don't when you have." You have a sample that's this small, that's super quiet, and it can only be very, you know, a certain size because you don't want everyone to know about it. So it's a tiny sample, and then you greatly increase that sample, and a whole bunch of other stuff comes out. You know, and, and that's what, as you said, that's what the first month or two, then they kind of tamp all that down, and then we all forget about it until the I next I feel year. like you have to judge them based on how they react to it. Like, every company has launch day issues, and it's how those companies react to them, the speed and right. candor and all those things that you have to judge them by. Absolutely. That, that's why it's such a good it's such a good thing when Apple uh, over the past couple of years, particularly, they've been better at making a public acknowledgement, at least not again, not tear their shirt open or do or put something <laughs> on the on the website. But simply when when someone when someone complains about something and gets a response back that wasn't an automatic bounce back saying we're looking at this problem and we're taking it seriously, that will give people about two or three weeks worth of okay, we'll wait and see what happens, and then that, then Apple usually has a patch for something, or at least they they rethink how they tuned the camera or how they tuned uh, an antenna earlier. It's when <laughs> it's in the old days when you're like, okay, this is this is going to be one of those things where you deny that I, that I've been seeing the actual and the actual antenna signal strength go from five to one, and then after about a month when you when you have to deal with it, you tell me it's my fault for holding it wrong, is it? Yeah. No, I actually have the cellular signal thing turned on and I can watch it. Yeah. Um What about the ten uh, R? When is when when can we order that? <laughs> was it the twenty first, I think they and said. And it comes out the twenty sixth, right? Yeah. So we're not that far off. I mean we're a few no. weeks off uh from that. Do we know anything about that at all? Is that uh, do are they have they sent out okay. Uh, you probably can't answer this. Um <laughs> Just nod if you, how could we phrase this? If they had a 10R sent out to people, you think somebody might have one? It would typically be too early for that kind of stuff. And also historically, now. Apple, also historically, Apple, when it's not at the event, um, they've done briefings like anywhere from a week to like the night before the launch. Oh, so wow. it's really, it's really hard to tell. Okay. It's, easy, it's yeah. It, it, it this seems like the sort of thing where they'll have like they'll they'll have a, a a hotel in New York and a hotel in 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 Chicago and they'll have their days of briefing. They they can do that anytime. They don't need to have a separate thing. 
Um, and also their strategy is so different out there. There could be a bunch of YouTube videos already being made. Who knows? Yeah, now, right. No, like, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, we don't that's know. That's absolutely right. Yeah, I should ask Marquez Brownlee is what you're saying. Well, what's amazing <laughs> is that the bloggers are getting are feeling about the YouTubers now the way the magazine people felt about the bloggers yeah. ten years ago. You know, it's not like nobody ever learned from those things. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 something that, that bears repeating that when you see uh, that uh, journalists and I will I will use the broadest term possible because everybody who has a good point of view and is honest is uh, is somewhere on the journalism spectrum. Uh, uh, it's not whereas maybe 10 or 15 years ago there used to be this mystique about ooh this person got loner or, ooh this person got or, ooh this person realize that every single time they have a certain number of these of these pieces of hardware allotted and they decide every time they're going to decide what do we want to achieve with, uh, with the uh, two days before release day coverage uh, and they want to try to manage that a little bit so that's why it's it's uh, it's important to to notice like if someone with a disability blog for instance gets one early that's an important thing to take note of because that means yeah. that they they don't think that they're they want they want that person's audience specifically to hear about this they know that this person is going to write about uh, focus on areas of the performance that someone like me is not going to focus on so that's that's why there was a what was it a cup was it a year ago or a couple of years ago that someone uh uh that, that someone did a did, did a chart of like the timeline of people getting early hardware and like a, 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 a two way chart of hardware releases and like pundits and who got ones early and who didn't trying to prop some sort of a vector about something about I don't know whether, whether it's about access journalism or about being on some sort of special list or whatever. And you, you look at that and say, no, that's because the big deal about this release was super, super, super new camera. So they don't really want the person who is super, super good at networking. <laughs> if they got 10, if they got 10 pieces of hardware to not just 10 pieces of hardware, but 10 hour long briefings and 10 people who are going to be on 24 hour standby for questions, Let's make sure it's the people who are going to cover the look at the parts of it that we really, really want people to know about. What's the timing was a of great, the, uh, What's the timing of the 10R and the iPad Pro announcement? Will there be an iPad Pro announcement? Yeah, I think the 10R yeah. will be just before it. Just before um, it. Okay. Yeah. I, I think, maybe I think it'll just be an, yeah. It won't be an um, event. It'll just be. It won't be an reviews. event. They'll just. There was this. It was this great Apple. And this guy was working at Apple, then left Apple briefly, then went back to Apple. And he had the best description I've ever heard of a relationship with Apple to people outside Apple. And that was just animal husbandry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's entirely what you, it's like what you can do. Like a Apple's there. And what can, how, you know, how does this help Apple? Yeah, and yeah. if like John Hamm reviewed the iPhone 10s, I forget what magazine it was in, but it was literally John. No, the Apple Watch Series Four. Sorry, the Star John of Hamm Mad was Men. The one, yeah, the Star of Madman was reviewing it for a magazine, and they know that John Am or Christy Brinkley is going to bring them millions more audience right. than so someone like me, frankly. Yeah, not, not not just not just millions more, but again, who are they not? Who are they not reaching? That will get a fashion. Uh, when the Apple Watch came out, they reached out to a lot of fashion bloggers because they don't. Again, look look at me. I'm wearing I'm wearing like a ten year old. <laughs> I, I'm I, I'm wearing the t shirt that I slept in, throwing a V neck sweater over it because I think it'll class it up. I'm not the person that you want like on a YouTube video and say, "Hey, dudes." I got this new watch. It looks really, it's $10,000, but yeah. But Beyonce in the pure gold watch, that sells. <laughs> I wonder where that watch is today. Some, some uh, assistant. <laughs> I was going to say, Jason, I was going to say, what's his name? Kanye did something unspeakable with it. But, um. <laughs> it's a, That was a series zero, so it makes it completely yeah. useless. You can't even upgrade They're it. hard to find, though. I keep looking for them, and like it's really hard to find people who are partying with those. I think they've just been kept as collector's items or just for the sure. gold value yeah. or something. Sure. <laughs> or, or, sure. Or, they just, or they just don't know where they are. It's like sure. it's not, until they, <laughs> not until they move, until they, took, they finally pull the drawers out of the dresser saying, oh, that's right. I did buy one of those watches. I stopped wearing it after a month because... <laughs> Sharon, where's so that gold, they need a gold watch this year Apple Because this me. was the first year the original gold couldn't update to the new watch OS, so they needed a new gold. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, How much is the Hermes? Mm. I was saying they didn't make a premium version of the Series 4, but there is an Hermes version. How much is that? Is that yeah, a lot Like 1500 bucks. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you can still spend money if you really, for some reason, yeah. really want yeah. to. And there's again, I keep saying this, but like I, I go to the Hermes store every time I pass by SFO, and it's like their bands are twice as expensive as the Hermes bands for Apple Watch. So if you're a devout Hermes uh, <laughs> sorry, Hermes, <laughs> people get upset. Hermes, Hermes, uh, Hermes Etienne, you can go there and get a discount Apple Watch band. Uh, it was, I remember going into the Hermes store in, in Paris. It was quite an experience, quite an experience. But that that was uh, back uh, when it was uh, just uh, selling uh, scarves. Um, 
Let's take a little break, and uh, we will come back with my little friends. <laughs> 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 Say hello to my little Alex Lindsay from the Pixel Car. Uh, Mr. Rene Ritchie. Say hello to my little friend from iMore.com. Bonjour. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Ça va bien. Oh, yeah. Thank you, by the way, for all the Quebecois uh, friends I have on Pokemon Go. I realize that <laughs> oh. at least half of my Pokemon Go friends are, are from your neck of the woods. Yeah, we're we're having a bunch of fun today because we had an election yesterday and a new party took over, a brand new party, and their initials are CAQ, and you can't say it out loud without Americans laughing at you. Uh -huh. yeah. He said Everyone's 12 years old. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And uh, wait till yep. the president gets a hold of that one. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. It's all oh, off. I think I think the president has had a hold of that since inauguration day. <laughs> oh, and that's Andy Yanako oh, from WGBH. Liberal Radio, Boston. Don't get high on your own supply, Leo. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Slack. This is the way we communicate Slack, where work happens. It's a collaboration hub for work. Whatever work you do with, the, with Slack, the right people in your team are kept in the loop. The information they need is always at their fingertips. I, uh, I am so happy. You know, we used uh, HipChat for a while, and HipChat got uh, merged with Slack. So we jumped on the Slack wagon... And uh, we're very happy. Here's our twit.tv uh, Slack channel. Just to prove I'm not making it up, we've got channels for all the shows. Conversations going on. Look, Megan Maroney sent a little uh, a little animated GIF to you, Karsten. Uh, and uh, it's, all, it's all fun and games on Slack, except work's getting done, too. And the nice thing about Slack is not, it's, it's better than email. It's more immediate. It's faster than email. But they have a lot of nice features that also make it friendly to you as a user. For instance, the ability to say, hey, I'm going to be offline. I don't work in, uh, in the evenings, that kind of thing. Just really is awesome. You can keep track of all your messages going back in time. So, you know, if there's any questions arise, you, you, you've got it all. It, uh, and by the way, one of the reasons we, we really were happy to go with Slack is all the integrations. Slack is integrated for us with all of uh, the uh, the devices and the thing, things like Panopta and uh, Atlassian and all the stuff we use, so that it's part of our workflow. It's a it's a partner with us. No more searching for emails for follow ups. Searching through multiple systems to find what you're looking for. No more multiple tabs and platforms to keep updated. If you use Salesforce, Zendesk, Google Drive, Jira. They all integrate. In fact, a thousand apps integrate with Slack. With mobile apps for iOS and Android, they sync as well. You can always pick up where you left off, no matter where you are. And your data is 100% encrypted and secure. With Slack, your team is better connected. I know ours is. Slack.com. S-L-A-C-K dot com. Check it out. Where work the quarter, the quarter happens. <laughs> Say again? I'm always amazed that like after since since we you know we got into Slack years ago and I'm I, I'm like I can't believe I'm running a whole company on my phone on your phone you know you just sit there and know. You're following up with everything kind of managing it all yeah. it's awesome the coalition future Quebec CAC Quebec is not run by the CAC the CAC yeah ITC judge speaking of internationalism the International Trade Commission judge which is despite its name a U.S. trade <laughs> organization like the world series leo it's yeah fun. yeah we own it all <laughs> uh declined to block the importation of iphones with intel chips even though he said that apple's phones do infringe uh one of qualcomm's patents qualcomm had asked the judge to block iphone importation in the united states he said that quote the judge said Quote, public interest factors weigh against granting Qualcomm's request for a ban. It will be reviewed by other judges. Apple said in a statement that Qualcomm unfairly demanded royalties for technologies it had nothing to do with. We're glad the ITC stopped Qualcomm's attempt to damage competition and ultimately harm innovators <laughs> and U.S. consumers. And to kick dogs and burn down trees. Yes. Well, I, I wonder how much... Uh, maybe Qualcomm's going to come out with this, but I was like, it's cost them. When Apple deciding they don't want to play anymore with Qualcomm has got to be costing more than any damages they're going to get from Apple. You know, it, it is, I think billions is of dollars. Sometimes like, you know, these things become 
principle more than money. Well, that's a lot of money. To be I think it's principal. core to Qualcomm's business. I mean, they are not a chip company. They make chips, but they are a patent licensing company. Right. And it's not just Apple. Like there have been governments who've gone after them, the, uh, Taiwan, Korea, the EU over some of their deals. And there's like Huawei. I think there's at least two companies that are suing them. They keep the second company's name out of the headlines. But speculation is it's Huawei and there might be more. And Qualcomm has been getting a percentage of the retail. I think it's like five percent of the retail cost of the device. They're they don't just want money for their technology. They want a piece of the action uh, and that doesn't scale. And as you know, they argue that the modem is so important, but there's so many important objects in a phone these days. And I think they're afraid that if Apple breaks through the way Apple broke through with the carriers, their entire business is going to go, you know, that was a really great business. It was a super happy business for Qualcomm. And I think they're afraid that those sort of glory days uh, will be over if they if they don't hold on to this as tightly as possible. Couldn't you argue, though, that Apple in uh, getting rid of Qualcomm chips and choosing Intel chips has chosen something, at least for the time being, something that's technologically inferior? Those those Intel modems are a lot slower. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Pro the problem the, the problem is that uh, Qualcomm's product is having having done such a good job on modems that if you basically put if you put their silicon in if you put their their code and their 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 technology in your phone you're not going to have to worry about where this person decides to carry it or where you where this where you decide to sell it and that's the value of of their company that part of it is uh, part of it is uh, acquiring patents but a lot of it is making sure that's all integrated in, into the system so to make sure that once again you don't have uh, a, a a a VHS versus beta versus whatever that other third uh, <laughs> videotape format was in Great Britain that I only found out about because Tecmo did a wonderful video about it. It's uh, they, they do add value, but the, the problem is that they're running into the band aid uh, situation where they may, they they have a product now that is too important, and also they've been doing too good a job protecting it, such that there the argument can now be made that the world can't really continue if. Uh, Qualcomm has the ability to ice an entire phone platform. So uh, for for everything that uh, Apple said, they still got a judgment handed against them saying that, yes, you are infringing on Qualcomm's patents. But it was more dire for Qualcomm because the judge uh, uh, pretty much said that pretty much said to every phone maker, go ahead, put Qualcomm, to, put, put uh, infringe Qualcomm's patents all you want. We are not the worst that's that's going to happen is that we'll ask you to write Qualcomm a check. We are never we are not going to ask you to stop making that phone, uh, because Which they were again, happy to do it, before. It, they just didn't want to write as big a check as they were. Well, being and that asked. was Qualcomm's <laughs> reaction. They said it makes no sense uh, if you find patent infringement, as the judge did, to then allow infringement to continue by denying an import ban. Uh, this is uh, Qualcomm General Counsel Don Rosenberg. Th that goes against the ITC mandate to protect American innovators by blocking the import of infringing products. It, it, it's so crazy that Samsung, who makes their own Exynos processor, ends up shipping Qualcomm processors in half their phones just because Qualcomm is such a right. giant pain in the derriere to deal with. Well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, uh, you see, I, I mean, it's. I, I really think it's I the like same. I like my 840, my Snapdragon 845. I, uh, I know. And but I like think as 5G could, comes along, yeah. this is going to be an even bigger but issue. Samsung could be integrated all the way to the silicon the way Apple is, but they can't, they can't because they can't. They don't know which processor your phone is going to happen to run. Right. Well, but I wonder a, if they're going to be emboldened by this decision, and they might say, "I hope oh, so." Yeah, you yeah, hope they, so. They, they could, but this is this is a problem that it, it extends way beyond this one platform or this one lawsuit. Uh, it's a it's a problem that uh, Google is now facing, where unfortunately they did such a great job building their search engine that although they're all alternatives, they're it's it's hard to imagine another company building a product that's so good that takes so many years to to steep in the crock pot. Uh, but to get those to, to get that kind of quality uh, and really being the number one uh, go to choice for for search anymore. So then you have a problem of, well, if you have because of your own success, whether it was through skullduggery or not, uh, if you have created a what what has stopped being a product and started being part of infrastructure, do you now have responsibilities yeah, to make that problem. infrastructure as wide as problem yeah. uh, right as possible? So there there are some. Uh, I, I believe that there are. Uh, I had a lawyer explain this to me two months ago, so I'm going to speak as though this is just something I, I wrote as <laughs> uh, I saw as graffiti on a wall somewhere. But there is there is there is the equivalent of like an eminent domain sort of thing. Which is not supposed to be used indiscriminately, but it is possible to simply say, "Sorry, I know that I know that you I, I know that you did this really, really great job inventing this way of putting signals across copper wire, 
but now that everybody uses that for everything, we're going to have to basically buy you, buy your patent for you and make it impossible for you to continue to make money off of this because we can't start, we can't, you're, you're engaging in practices that make it impossible for someone to get service in a place that's not profitable to get service from. But that's the way that we, we get people to, uh, uh, to call 911. So we, we are not giving you the option of not running a profitable company. So we have to take some of your IP from you. Another another company is not too happy is Intel, which uh, in a blog post said Qualcomm has publicly disparaged Intel's products as inferior. <laughs> well, okay, maybe okay. they are. They didn't. They, he didn't defend that. He said it's easy to say things, but Intel's track record is clear. Every day we push the boundaries of computing and communication technologies, and the proof is in the pudding. Last year, the U.S. Patent Office awarded more patents to Intel than to Qualcomm. Okay, but oh, the size of their patents. <laughs> I mean, like yeah. it, it, this happens in every industry. Like, like uh, oh, Google man. had to use LG displays so in the Pixel because there weren't enough Samsung panels, right, right. and Apple and Google are investing billions of dollars to make LG make better OLED panels because the world yep. actually needs more OLED panels. Right, right. But that, but, and that's and that's a good thing. If if you're shut out of if the the fact that Qualcomm is being such jerks means that Intel now has an opening. If they if if the first if the first page of their marketing brochure is now to deal with deal with us, we're not as good as Qualcomm, but we're not jerks to work with, and we're getting we're solving these problems. That will give you diversity, just like DuckDuckGo. Uh, is such a great alternative to Google because of the things that are annoying about using the the, the Google search product. Well, and, I, and I think that one of the things, I mean, this is the, the bigger question about patents at some point is uh, the original, uh, my understanding at least, the original idea behind a patent was that the inventor was given a certain amount of time to yeah. make money with that patent and then it was put into the into the public, you know, in domain. Uh, but they, the idea was to give someone the chance to make it themselves, not to... Right, you know, like, like you know, so, so that they, they get yeah. some time. You get, you, you get know, to do that. Twelve years or whatever it is, whatever the term right. is these days, to reap the benefits. But then, because you patented it, right. the process is put into the public domain. Everybody understands how it works. And, and this is slightly right. different because these are, these are technologies that everybody need. If you if they pick your patent to be part of the standard. Uh, for that technology, everybody has to be able to apply to that standard. So you're supposed to do re reasonable access. It was a non friend, non yeah. non discriminatory right. access to it, and that's where I think the argument is. You know, Apple says they have Makes to pay sense. Qualcomm money. Qualcomm says Apple has to pay them money. Apple is saying Qualcomm is asking for an unreasonable amount of money. Right. right. That's right. basically you boil it all down. Yeah. And it's going to go back and forth in the courts. Back and forth, it all yeah. boils down to that. And I think part of the reason they're not stopping shipments is because the the, the judge knows this is going to go back in. You know, we're going to go through like. Like six more appeals and but apple's withholding billions i mean that's that's that hurts qualcomm badly so i think they have every incentive to fight this hard right yeah speaking of patents apple has won on an appeal apple had lost a uh, a, a court battle with the university of wisconsin madison uh they'd filed suit in 2014 saying that several iphone and ipad processors used technology that was developed at the university of wisconsin a jury gave them an a, a award of uh I think 234 million and then another 272 million uh, added to that fine. So it was it was more than half a billion dollars at uh, at risk. A judge, a federal appeals court has now overturned that court ruling saying, well, no, Apple didn't infringe and and this is the standard you, you need to overturn. No reasonable juror could have found infringement, effectively saying that jury was wrong. Mm. Uh, so Apple's happy. They uh, have appealed a fairly hefty patent dispute and won. Meanwhile, the FaceTime one, I think, is still going on in the rocket docket. I mean, like you win some, you lose some. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I understand the need for this, and it's a shame that so much energy gets put into it and so much money and so much innovation is stymied. It's the non-practicing. Like if a company or an inventor is doing something amazing with technology, but it's, it's a lot of the, the companies that amass vast amount of, of patents and then apply them in very, like, this is a fax machine patent, but we're going to stop you from using FaceTime. Yeah, that's terrible. Although I think the University of Wisconsin patent is because of something that was yeah. actually invented at the University well, and, of Wisconsin. And what happens with a lot of these, uh, with a lot of the um, educational institutions is, you know, you're spending a lot of time coming up with new ideas, working on stuff that people haven't, especially in a university, you can work on things that don't have commercial viability yet. And one of the ways that you underwrite some of that, that work is that you... Um, do either provisional patenting for the next year or you do or, or file a provisional application or you actually do the patent um, and that you hope that some of those things come back and some universities especially uh, um, 
California state universities uh, have made a lot of money. Oh, <laughs> you know, on those, you well, know, like more Stanford has, yeah, you know, was, Google money because yeah. Google was invented at Stanford. It doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of money that goes back into these universities that uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if the students get any benefit from that, but the but the organization is able to b build some more shiny buildings. <laughs> Hey, basketball look. team still cannot accept a free candy bar, though. <laughs> exactly. Um, we talked uh, last week, I think, or maybe the week before. Megan Maroney was at the Apple store in, uh, up here in Santa Rosa when it was robbed. Uh, there, there's a oh, second uh, theft there. They've been robbing uh, robberies all over California. Warrants for 17 people were issued. Arrests, arrests have already started today uh, for a ring. A ring of people who had robbed Apple stores in 19 counties. More than a million dollars worth of Apple goods were stolen. The robbers were known for wearing hoodies and storming in, in large groups to snap up products on display in a matter of seconds. That's what happened in the Santa Rosa store. Uh, seven of those involved, there are 17 warrants, but seven of those involved have already been arrested. Seems like uh, there's a bunch of cameras there. There's a bunch of stuff there. Like, how do you think you're actually, that's actually going to turn out? Like, we, well, we, no, it's, it's a, it's a very smart play because, uh, most, most stores, I think Apple store included their, the uh, staff is, staff has said, you know, if someone is trying to steal product, let them steal. And they're, and they're, they clearly are interested in getting in and getting out fast. Let them get in and get out fast. Oh, well, uh, sure. Now, I and mean, now, and now that, and that's so, true in a bank too. You're you're never told. Now, I yeah. remember when I and was in a record store. They said if somebody steals a record, that's okay. Yeah. Let them walk out. Yeah. Don't threat. Right. Don't risk your and life. Right. And and there's a thriving market for parts. So the fact the fact that uh, these things are are all device managed and probably are not are going to be on full lockdown the moment they leave the store. That's okay because they're just going to be taken apart and parted out anyway. They wouldn't. The fact is, it wouldn't happen if they th these things wouldn't happen if it weren't a good business decision. These are not. You're, you're not looking at like crackheads that are just doing no, no, it's crimes. a good business decision well, i'm really just saying under, eight of them are in jail <laughs> well, <laughs> nine of them still at large but probably are going to be in jail i don't know how good a business decision well, this was it's but it wouldn't but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be widespread if there wasn't a big upside if it wasn't right. an easy oh, thing I'm to sure do an upside. Yeah. yeah it's an upside for the guy who who probably won't get caught who they didn't even know who it was yeah who they supplied the parts to Elliot, that was a great Elliot, business Elliot model for him. He's going to get away with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's not so much for the guys going into the store. That's not a good business model for them. They, I don't know if anybody got that reference, but no, uh, no. Again, you, I, I, I got that. You got That's it. <laughs> um, Apple is being, as long as we're in court, <laughs> Apple is being accused of unsavory business practices in a Memoji trademark lawsuit. Uh -oh. oh boy! Lawsuit filed on Thursday alleges Apple snaked the Memoji trademark from an Android app of the same name through a series of questionable behind-the-scenes moves. One of which allegedly involved the creation of a single-purpose LLC. By the way, that is done all, all the, time the time by every major company. Yeah. You don't want to negotiate as Apple because someone's going to go, "Wow, this right. is my payday!" And so all these companies will build a LLC somewhere to negotiate um, a transfer of, of, uh, of IP. Um, that's super, like, super the, common. The company that made the Memoji, which, by the way, did the same thing, basically, uh, for Android, had filed a, a trademark application, but it, before the registration was obtained, Apple made a play for its version of the name. They filed in April 2016. Apple created a subsidiary called... Mimo Fun Apps LLC to obtain I who the name. CEO of that was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I, w I wonder how many meetings they had inside of Apple to decide on what name to choose because yeah. it had to be the perfect name. Well, the funny thing is a deal was apparently reached uh, and uh, so they were able to buy the rights to this trademark from the owners the deal was reached June 4th, 2018, a day you might remember. It's the day Memojis were announced at the Worldwide Developer Conference. <laughs> right. I mean, Cisco owned the iPhone trademark the day Steve Jobs announced right. it, so Apple's hardly been on yeah, trademark. No, this is normal. Somebody. I think this is business yeah. as usual. Yeah. Uh, Social Tech, the owners of it, said an unknown person inquired about buying the rights in May, just two weeks prior to Apple's Memoji debut. Uh, he was told the Memoji name is not for sale. Anyway, that this is in court. That's where you go when you have a dispute like this. Yeah. It's better than getting there's fights a, in the barn. Yeah. There's, there's, this there's, is what, 
there's, there's a lot of that going around. I've seen a lot of that in like uh, on, at smaller stakes where people uh, do a form of insider trading where they know they work for a very, very large company and they know that they're trying to decide between these 11 names. And so they decide that what if we were to register this or what if I were to tell my cousin, the lawyer, to create a company and register this as a trademark before they before they get that, they might be able to for eighteen thousand dollars for the startup cost, they might be able to get like a fifty thousand dollar oh go away slap uh, uh, a settlement. So, yeah, this, this this stuff is crazy. The, the, the weakness, though, is that people don't realize that unless you're unless you're chasing after Apple money. The likelihood that someone will just make up a different name <laughs> and say, "Well, <laughs> if, if, if you uh, there, if you uh, try to float them from five thousand dollars to like thirty thousand dollars, and someone says, well, the difference between five thousand and thirty thousand is us just simply calling our uh, calling our our new uh, web web processor Gamonsk. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, not going to. You have a great name, but well, our software is better than the name. We, I mean, if you've tried to acquire a domain name, we've tried to acquire domain names for Twit. And we don't want to come in as twit because we're afraid people will hold us up. Yeah, so right. you, you yeah. don't come in as twit. You, you get somebody I mean, else. And the alternative is like we have Apple Wallet and Google Wallet and Microsoft Wallet, a bunch of just bland generics that nobody really cares about. Right. Yeah. Right. But it is it is kind of tragic because you see uh, I what, 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 what breaks my heart is when you see these people who are like kind of chiselers where it's like. Hey, you're you basically this domain name is Park. It's not making money for anybody. It's, yes, it's not all the time. It's not doing anything productive. And I, I have a cool idea for something that I want to do, and uh, and I, it's actually going to be used, and it's perfect for this application. And I'm willing to give you a fair amount of money for it. And so, oh well, we, our, our counter offer is thirty thousand dollars, and you have to come back and say. I'm going to, I've offered you $5,000. That is literally my top. <laughs> and you, you now have the choice between getting $5,000 for this domain or nothing for another eight years. And you, and it's amazing how many companies will just say, no, we, that's our final offer. Thinking that you, you've got that, that, uh, you know, my, my, my light bulb storefront.net is going to be the, the next name of Pixar's next big movie. And that's who you're really dealing with. And you really got to hold them up by the, like, Oh man, <laughs> And, that, that, and that's why really good domain names go to this site. Yep. This domain name is for sale. That yeah. annoys me. Leo.com. <laughs> Can't get it. Still waiting <laughs> on it. Still waiting on it. Yeah, hey, I didn't know this. I've had, I've, had, I've had so many offers for CWOB.com just because what? it's a four-letter domain. Really? And... And and not because people have any need for it. It's just that they want to, they feel as though because this is an old domain, maybe someone's forgotten about it and they can just offer somebody 500 bucks for it and get it. And I'm like, okay, it's not, if, if you're, if you're willing to like vest my vest, 20% uh, of my retirement fund with an offer. Okay. I'll listen, but it's like, uh, well, I didn't know this final cut pro 10 did not have official eGPU support until Mojave came out. Yep. As an eGPU owner, I'm glad to see there's now a checkbox. One thing, one thing I have noticed is it feels like Final Cut to some degree, but compressor to a huge degree is much slower in Mojave. <laughs> so oh. is it? I'm assuming that we're going to get some kind of update. Ooh. It feels like it's not using the extra instance of the processor, but it is. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm, you know, like I, just used to things going at a certain multiplier and it is what I expect to happen in minutes is happening in sometimes hmm. almost an hour. Hmm. Uh, it is, it is just a, it's, it's something, something's off, you know, I'm impressive. still on high Sierra on my final cut. Pro yeah. Machine. <laughs> yeah I, I, I don't think I'm going to change uh, my lap based on my experience with my laptop. Um, yeah. I don't think I'm going to jump to Mojave for a final cut thing just quite yet. Uh, if I'm using yeah. compressor a lot, if you're using compressor a lot, which I do like, a lot as far from a compression perspective but I'm not at that level yet something is um <laughs> something is uh something, something feels i'm off. at the share button level andy i'm not at the alex Lindsay compressor level yet. yeah great article on the halide blog we love halide it's a, a third party yeah. camera for um, uh apple iphones as just a little bit of background here sebastian dewitt who's a designer who wrote this he was the one in charge of doing stitched leather from steve jobs's airplane for find my friends ah. at apple and as the designer of Double Twist was the first person, I believe, to anti-alias pentile displays. So he knows of which he speaks. Wow. <laughs> and he's the designer of Halide. Has yeah. a great article on what's new in the iPhone XS camera, but specifically addresses this issue about the soft filter on the selfies. He says it doesn't exist. 
I don't want to say that some people make up controversies to get YouTube impressions, but you do have to take things on the internet with a grain of salt. Now, no one's denying that there is some uh, smoothing going on, enhancing yes. going on. But it's just he, not a beauty filter, and some people hope that if it was, Apple could give you an on-off button. But since it is not, they cannot give you an on-off button. It's part of the software. Is it doing the same thing on the front-facing camera as it's doing on yeah, the back? Yeah, so oh. it, there's a couple of things that work there. Uh, he explains it really well. You know, um, Matthew Panzerino had a series of tweets that also explained it really well. Um, and my understanding, after speaking to Apple a little bit about it, is that there is they have a completely new imaging pipeline everywhere from the sensor through the silicon and through everything that gets adjusted before they present to you the image. And it's doing a lot of very complicated things. One of the things is it's new HDR does get so much more detail in the highlights and so much more detail in the shadows that there's less difference in the edges, which is something that traditionally you'd use to sharpen an image is to create greater contrast in the darks and lights right at the edges of objects. It also got rid of a ton of the noise, which people often thought was texture in the skin and the banding, which gave it a lot of sort of a gritty realism to it. But it didn't, what Apple's done with some other things like rope and brick and clouds is to purposefully use AI to maintain a texture uh, and to protect it even against compression artifacts. And they're not doing that with skin. And I think that's a lot of what we're seeing is the, the, because they're shooting so fast, both the ISO and just the speed of the shutter, they're just shooting everything so fast. It's got massive amounts of noise. They're reducing that amount of noise to compensate, and they're not retexturing it. So it ends up looking like this, oh, this buttery. Here's an example. The, the, the two photos on the left are with the iPhone 10. These are both raw. And the two on the right with iPhone 10s, and you can see a lot more noise yes. in the 10s image. That's raw, though, because by the time you see it, the noise has been processed it's merged. out. Yeah. It's merged multiple four frames plus four frames of HDR plus a long exposure plus image and all sorts of other processing. Well, we used to so we used to um, when we were working on matte paintings um, uh, in a in a movie company I used to work for. Uh, one of the things that you would do is you'd run the you'd run the uh, the the camera a little longer. This is when we actually had film, and um, you would get let's say ten frames of a couple seconds you just grab 10 frames and you'd have one be you know 100 percent. the bottom one would be 100 percent, and then the next one would be 50 and then 25 and then 12.5 and 6.25 and what it would do is it would basically average out everything that um uh that was uh different different about the image you're theoretically it's the same image that you're looking at you couldn't do it with people moving it was just something that you did when everything's still but it would get rid of all the grain um and that way you could add stuff to it and then add the grain back on top of it. And then it would look like it was all part of the same thing. And you wouldn't have grain uh, uh, building up. The The thing that I think the my theory looking at this is that Apple's taking a whole bunch of photos and they're taking them at very high speed, uh, which means it's going to be grainier. There's going to be more errata in the chip. But at the same time, it's moving just ever so slightly because you're not, as a person, not completely still. And so as it average those, averages those out, some of those fine details, which I'm sure they're, they're still pulling back in, but some of those fine details are are changing just a little bit and are getting averaged out, um, which gives it kind of a more, a very smooth uh, texture. They're grabbing the major things, but not grabbing the smaller things because then you'd get all kinds of weird rata. Yeah. Um, but I think that that might be part of the the process just based on the stuff we used to do. Yeah, it's it's hard to, it's, it's, it's important for everybody to understand that uh, there's sharpness and then there's perceived sharpness. And that's what this blog post is a really good job of explaining. Uh, the, num the number of times I've been disappointed with uh, a camera I've just bought because, wow, I t one of the reasons why I bought it was because I went on Flickr and looked for other pictures taken with this camera. And why, why are the pictures I'm getting not that sharp? Well, because you went into Photoshop or you even went into the Photos app and just simply slid, <laughs> slid something to the left to say, please make this look sharper. It really is about localized contrast. It's not about sharpness. It's about how much you notice the sharpness. That said, the, this is, it really is a hugely valuable blog post. It's uh, explaining a lot, of not, not just about the XS, but about how the eye perceives uh, – uh, sharpness, how the eye perceives detail, and how pretty much every camera tries to uh, tries to make a pleasant uh, picture. All that said, if the, it's a binary reaction. Either you think a photo looks good or it doesn't, and it doesn't matter whether it came out of a five thousand dollar camera with a three thousand dollar lens with ten thousand dollars with a lighting, or it came out of a phone camera. Uh, it's if people are consistently saying that I don't like how faces look in this camera. 
Apple is going to address that, uh, and it's uh, it, it it is deeply integrated in the pipeline, as as Renee said. Uh, but they can still put something downstream because uh, remember that every JPEG is is like the prints that old people above the age of twenty eight <laughs> used to pick up uh, from the drugstore. The the negative is the is the data that comes off the the uh, the chip. And the JPEG is just simply the decision made by the image processor about what that should look like. Uh, so it'll, it'll be okay. One, th one thing that I've been really, really, I was really excited uh, about the silly details uh, of the uh, way that the XS takes pictures is that now because they're trying to burst so many frames into one uh, combined image, they're using a, uh, a higher shutter speed. So it's, it's a, a faster shutter speed. One of the problems of consistently of the iPhone, uh, to my point of view, has been that Apple has been uh, concerned about uh, introducing image, image noise, uh, which is what happens when you make the, the chip, you put more power through the chip and you make it more more light sensitive. But the problem is that when you have something that's in motion of any kind, that's why, that's the difference between like a, a super, super sharp picture of a squirrel <laughs> or, <laughs> which is what I was, what I'm getting, uh, what I, I usually get out of a Google phone or a, or a Samsung phone and one that fine for Instagram, uh, but it's, but you can see if you look closely that the eyes are not quite as sharp as they could be. And it's uh, I have no kids. I also don't own like a small yappy dog. Uh, so that's why I take pictures of squirrels. But if you have a kid or if you have a small yappy dog, you realize that that's going to be something very, very important. There was one. There's a, something that's really interesting to me is that there's you know, and everyone will admit that this is subjective. There is an absolutely an element yeah, of science absolutely. to this, but there's absolutely an image, uh, an element of art to it. And Panzerino in his tweet said that he would much rather have this detail, and then to exactly what Andy said, he can slide that sharpness slider as much as he wants, but he can't recover any detail that's lost by pre-sharpening the image before they give it to him. Where Neil Patel from The Verge had a delightful tweet where he's like, "I will admit that all the details in there, but your eye can't see it, is among the most delightful existential ways to evaluate a camera's quality I've ever heard." in some time so you yeah. have people who spend all their days with these cameras arguing about it so you're you're allowed not to like it and you're allowed to complain bitterly yeah. if you want it to change and i encourage you please because i'm not a fan of what the selfies look like so i encourage you please complain that, and does that's it, does it, been, is been, it only been, with the phone software that it does this so you could theoretically just use another app right yeah, so if you use how, so the raw that's coming off of there is, and this is a whole other thing, the raw that's coming off of there is now purpose built for the AI and the ML. So if you just use any raw app, you might get results that are hard to work with. Halide created their own raw pipeline to sort of give you their version of a smart raw that's very different than Apple's. So you'd have to find an app that does raw, but also knows how to handle the kind of raw data Apple's pulling off of a computational photography system now. Here's uh, here's in this in his post he shows on the left uh, iPhone 10 raw which actually looks pretty acceptable, and the iPhone 10 S raw which is overblown is overexposed. In fact, if you look in the details, the iPhone 10 exposed at 160th for, at ISO 40, the 10s 120th at ISO 80. So 120th, yeah, one one twentieth. So. Uh, you know, he says, basically, this is very bad for, he says, we make a camera app that takes raw photos. So this is very bad. Not only does raw not benefit from merging multiple photos, but iPhone photos generally get very noisy above iOS 0200. In the right-hand image, the highlights are clipped, so you can't recover them. It's overexposed, yeah. and it's permanently overexposed. So that's why they've created, basically, as you said, a new pipeline. Smart specifically raw. <laughs> for, for yeah. Halide. So... Um, when should you use this, though? That's the question. Uh, I I would you know I would say that have have uh, have the the Halite app is is amazing. I love it. I, this, it's one yeah. of the reasons why I would love to switch back to iPhone at some point. Uh, because I, obviously I can't get that. I would love for them to make it for my for. I don't care about all the hundreds of different Android phones out there. Just make it for the phone that I choose to buy. I'll be fine. I'll <laughs> give you my. I'll give you my ten dollars, and you'll make a profit off of that. Um, but uh, I, I, I do think that uh, the uh, that Apple's stock camera app is perfect for what a smartphone camera is supposed to do. People are not interested in fine art photography. They're really, although you can do fine art photography under certain circumstances, it really is designed to push one button, get the best results possible. Whatever results you come up with are probably going to be way better than the user is hoping for. And I, as engineers and as artists at, at Apple, they want to make the best picture possible. But this is the reason why uh, I stopped doing side by side by side by side like published comparisons years ago because I do think they're at this point they're totally counterproductive. They will teach you that 
uh, they, they'll they will they will get you to try to trust a test result instead of your own eyes. The fact that one picture is a little bit too warm to your eyes compared to this other picture. OK, but that doesn't mean that that's something that a you would have noticed if you didn't have this side by side comparison. And it's not as though you're going to take every single picture and think, oh, my God, this this camera is always taking yellow photos. I can't stand it. So uh, really, uh, it's, it's interesting for people who are paid to comment about this. Super interesting to read stuff from experts who absolutely know their stuff and they're not simply saying, well, I took these three pictures. I took these three pictures with these three cameras and I noticed that the skin is a lot smoother in this one. The question is, did you not like the picture that the iPhone took? Uh, and I, I, having, having seen enough of these examples, I don't, I don't have a, an, a new iPhone yet, uh, but having seen enough of these examples, I would like to see Apple fine tune that a bit. I expect that they're going to, but it doesn't take anything less than fantastic pictures. What, 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 not, I, well, I might argue with you on that. Um, in certain conditions, it doesn't. Apple's goal is completely reasonably to let average people get great pictures without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But here's a good example. This On the right is iPhone Smart HDR, and you can see the smoothing that's happened to the singer's face has completely obliterated detail. I mean, it looks like a watercolor. Halide's Smart HDR does preserve the detail in the singer's face. So in low light situations, for instance, um, th there there are some yep. problems. But, uh, but, but, and he and, points out you can turn off, uh, which I didn't know, Apple's HDR. You, it's a, it's a kind of non-obvious, but you go to settings, camera, disable smart HDR, and then when you open the camera app, you'll have an HDR setting in the top controls. So that yeah. gives you a chance to turn it off or on uh, when you want it, and there are times you may not want it. You should also. Although I don't know if that's down. smart HDR. That might be the. That's just the old HDR. To double check, maybe. I have to yeah. double check that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, I mean, there are definitely some issues, and Halide isn't yeah. the perfect solution for it either. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, it would be nice if Apple. What would be really nice is if Apple did a a, a JPEG or a high efficiency image format image that was using all the smarts. Maybe over smoothing, maybe not, and then gave you a switch that said, "Okay," or you could just have the raw. You you can turn on keep both images, so you'll get the the regular image yeah. and the HDR saved to your camera. The problem is yeah. you're getting this Apple Smart Raw, which is a little less than. Good. Yeah, like, like you're, for, again, I, you're talking to like a, a nerd who like owns like way more cameras than he actually needs, and and even I'm saying that I I think that the better job you do of hiding things like raw features from the user, given what people are using, the given what one of these 100 million iPhone users are using it for, the less confusion you're going to create. I love the idea of putting, I, I'm not always a fan of Apple collecting every application preference inside this, this, this extra app called settings, but I like these solutions that say, if you are, if you are interested enough in having raw quality, uh, you will have done the Google search or you will, you will have read the, the iBooks manual will be created for you and you will know to look into this settings uh, settings pane and turn on raw uh, raw capture. Or, I just think that the, and, and I commend Apple for do this, doing this, make uh, it possible for third party apps like Halide yeah, exactly. to completely bypass the processing and do their own thing. And I think that's the, yeah. that may be the best of both worlds. That's I mean that that's an un, that's an under 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 understood part of development. Uh, Apple oftentimes people uh, people who've been developing for Apple for a long 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 time develop really really good relationships uh, with engineers inside of Apple. And so it's possible for them to get not uh, not uh, not a uh, uh, non-competitive help but if they say here's what we're trying to do and we can't figure out how to do it they will they will often get solutions from apple that were are not necessarily available in the book that you buy uh <laughs> that you download from amazon.com about programming so these are the people that know how to push this stuff to its highest limits these are the people who can who can develop a, a raw pop pipeline and apple does this because I, I do think that philosophically they know that inside Apple, they're developing for the regular consumer, and they are grateful to third-party developers like the developers of Halide, who are going to say, "We're going to we're going to let you create the pro level thing because we know that there are it's easy to make it's easier to make a hundred thousand hundred million consumers happy with a camera app than to make." 100 <laughs> uh, like pro or semi-pro photographers happy with how something works well, and I, so I, I'm, I think that apple's helping behind the scenes i still think that apple i mean i've said this before but i think apple focuses almost all their efforts on what will 90 percent of the people want to do 90 percent of the time 
And if you're developing an app, I always think that you should. What we did when we were developing uh, you know, apps for the Mac platform was to look at that 1010. You know, like what do 10% of the people want to do 10% of the time? You know, or, or what, or 10% of people want to do 100% of the time, but whatever, we want to live in that little world is the place that you can safely solve things for a while that, and you know that Apple's probably not going to encroach on, on that. And, and those are the people also that are willing to pay for um, yep. something that is different. If you care yep. about all of this, go to blog.haylide.com. <laughs> Yes. Read Sebastian DeWitt's uh, very, very good, I think, with lots of examples article. It's great. Um, his general uh, conclusion is it's still a great camera, but you need to be aware of what it's doing. And in some cases, especially if you're a serious photographer, there may be... Here's a good example that Apple provided of how it smooths in low light compared to yep. daylight. And, uh, and that's... Yep. You know, Apple said that this is what it did. These were images it used in its... Yep. And it's uh, product, line. and that's the front was, sensor, which is much smaller in low light. Yeah, yeah. and that, and that that concert uh, that concert side by side picture, either one of those is miraculous on a camera. It's only recently that you, you wouldn't even you, you would look at people who are taking pictures at concerts saying, "Oh, you're you're an idiot. You're not going to get a good picture." Right. And now you're getting pictures that are at least good and oftentimes great. And before well, anybody who's ever before used a camera phone will recognize this crunched image. I mean, that yeah, I'm no, not sure exactly. I would call that a great. But that's a great well, image. I'm, I'm, well, I'm saying this, this is pretty the good. Light, and that's the, from the, the light same camera, exactly. just different processing. Exactly, but the, the the light is not the light is not the strongly honored. She's not hit by a spotlight. It's super super low light, and at least give you a picture that you can help you can share with your friends. Say, hey, look look how close I was to the stage. Right. And let, let me, but just to just to give you an indication of how good these cameras are. Uh, this year, I uh, did my I, I, one of my one of my goals for this year was to have have my have my photography derided by uh, a by a group of people with higher knowledge of what con constitutes good photography. So I decided I'm going to I'm going to start like I'm going to enter at least one juried art juried oh, uh, photo. You. You show. I submitted I submitted three, and the one that they accepted that's going to be on the walls in, in a couple in a couple of weeks uh, was shot with an iPhone 10 last year. Wow! And it looks magnificent. You would not and uh, granted it's, it's not that every picture you take with an iPhone 10 is beautiful, but I, uh, last uh, last week I went to a really good like professional print studio and produced uh, an 11 by 17 and a 16 by 20, and both of them look magnificent. You would not guess. I, I hid. There, there were some crimes. Uh, but there were some crimes uh, from the fact that those were shot with a standard camera app and saved as a JPEG, but easily concealed. But there's so much detail, so much tonality, that even blown up to that huge size, it looks magnificent. So really, uh, Apple ha always has uh, so much to be proud of because they were always at the head of the of the of the line for people who were saying. It's, I know that people are just posting things on Facebook and Instagram, but some these pictures are going to wind up <laughs> are going to be like the last picture you ever got of of your grandmother uh, before she unfortunately unexpectedly dropped dead, and that's going to be the picture that you someone's going to print at eight by ten and put on the on the sofa table. So it's like there's anything we can do to make that one button push as effective as possible. We're going to do. They have lots to be proud of. And uh, as as uh, Sebastian points out, Apple is, since it's all software, Apple can over time yeah, modify tweak. this, tweak yeah. it. We're, we're we're moving into such a crazy place yeah. when it comes to uh, to, phone, to to cameras, where you know the the physical element is becoming completely separated from the calculation. I mean, we've been doing this for a while. When we talk about a CMOS sensor or even a CCD, the CMOS sensor, everything is all all the little RGBs are all next to each other. So there's a lot going on when you see an image you know to even have it look sharp because it's all blurry um and and so but we've now moved you know we're just going to keep on moving i think down this path where there's so much of it's computational and i still I, I say this i think every time we talk about cameras but the funnest thing to look at for me is to play with things with focus um you know on on the on the phone you take take your portrait photos and then you open it up and you rotate around to see how it viewed the 3d space and and are able to really kind of dig into those things and it, it really gives you a place to um, experiment with the idea of computational photography. Remind me, I have to re-download Focus. Yeah. New phone. Yeah, it's great. Our show today brought to you by IT Pro TV. You know, a study just came out from uh, MIT, and it doesn't surprise me, but it probably won't surprise you, but it does confirm what everybody, I think, thought. IT occupations have grown by almost 20% in the last, say, 10 years, between 2004 and 2017. 
IT jobs are out there, lots of them, and they're great jobs. While the earning growth for college graduates has flattened since 2000, earnings for individuals working in IT, significant growth. Now's the time to take a look at a new career in IT or move up the ladder by getting some skills, uh, additional skills. IT Pro TV has you covered either way from CompTIA and Cisco to EC Council to VMware. They've got all the certs everybody wants. You can study in over 4,000 hours of binge-worthy on-demand training. Great hosts, too. Uh, they do it kind of like we do in a talk show format. They have a chat room. If you're watching live, they're live every day. Content goes studio to web in 24 hours. So it's always fresh, always up to date. And they're always adding new content uh, areas, which makes it a little uh, interesting to find. That's why they've uh, really improved the search. They've got uh, all the courses listed by category, certification, job role, Stream IT Pro TV's courses live and on demand worldwide via Chromecast, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, PC. Of course, they have iOS and Android apps. And that all makes it very easy to watch at home on the big screen, in the car as you drive in, at work on your computer. And if you manage a team, man, you got to look at IT Pro TV. It's a great way to keep your team's skills up to date. Look at that. They're over 100, they just went over 100,000 members as we, as we were watching. That's kind of amazing. Congratulations. I hope there's a little party going on right now at IT Pro TV. Go to itpro.tv slash MacBreak to learn more about IT Pro TV's team solution. Really great way to keep keep your team up to date and you can track all their, you know, their viewing and their logins and all that. And you can request a free team trial at itpro.tv slash MacBreak. If you're an individual that's looking to get some training to get a job or improve your skills. There's a free seven-day trial for you at the same address, itpro.tv slash MacBreak. Use this offer code and you'll get 30% off your subscription for the lifetime of your active subscription. 30% off. You have to use the offer code MacBreak30. MacBreak30. So uh, just to do a little math for you, normal standard subscriptions, $570 a year, which I think is a great deal. Use MacBreak30, $399 a year. $399 a year for top-notch, engaging, fun training in every area of IT. Flexible training, binge-worthy content, life-changing results. Of course, itpro.tv slash MacBreak. It's uh, time. It's emoji time. <laughs> yes, sir. It's emoji time. 70 new emojis coming to iOS 12.1, including... Hair, this is from Engadget, hair options, sports items, and animals. And Montreal bagels. I'm claiming them as Montreal bagels. <laughs> I think they look like Montreal bagels. They don't look, by the way, I read an article by a New Yorker just the other day. They said the last great bagels are still made in Montreal. They're not made in New York anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Tell that, People tell like that Zabars have ruined it. <laughs> you know, it started when Cynthia Nixon is running for governor in uh, the great state of New York. Got some controversy because... <laughs> she ordered a cinnamon raisin bagel with Gravlax, and people were up in arms. Is so, Gravlax a Pokemon? No, it is a delicious no. spread. However, okay, there's rainbow bagels some places too. It I've is never a savory. Seen. It is a savory spread that shouldn't go on a sweet bagel, and I understand oh. that point of view. But honestly. I mean, I don't know, savory sweet? Uh, that works for me. It's not it's like chocolate covered pretzels. I like where you're hitting there. It's like salt on your on your chocolate. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah. Didn't didn't this sort of stuff happen to Leslie Leslie Nope in Parks and Recreation every single time she tried to run for anything? Well, it's that <laughs> it's that old thing that, you know, trying to look like you're a, a native when you're not. But in fact, Cynthia Nixon lives in Manhattan, so I think she can have her bagel any damn way she pleases. Thank you very much. <laughs> And if, you know, I'm going to, I got to go to Montreal because I want a real bagel. The last yes, great go. bagel still made in Montreal. We'll go to Fairmount. We'll go to oh, oh, St. Vieter. St. Vieter and Fairmount are across the street from each other. Ancient rivals. I like them both. It's controversial, but I like them both. <laughs> yeah, they used to, you know, New York bagels used to have, they were denser. They were like lead weights, frankly. <laughs> you could <laughs> use them to fish. Yep. Uh, and now they're all fluffy and puffy and, you know, I mean, yeah, I, it's just kind of the Noah's bagel thing. It's is round fluffy, bread. Puffy, yeah. And the hole yeah. has gotten smaller and smaller. It's just not the same. No. They still make them the old-fashioned way in Montreal. We still got was... holes that'll drop you filling right on the floor. <laughs> like, uh, here comes a kangaroo, a lobster, a cupcake, and a mango. 
Yeah. That is a what is that? Is that a hornet? That's scary. I, a, I don't want a wasp. Mosquito, I think. Is oh, it is it a skeeter? Ugh. Why did they add that? And I a raccoon? Yeah. Ugh. Okay, lacrosse I can get behind. Frisbee I can and get behind. And still no put in. I mean, like, you should be able to hold down on the oh. french fries and get put in, tater tots, and oh. mashed potato options. And they just, Unicode is failing me. Failing us. Yeah. So uh, I have the public beta of 12.1 uh, on my uh, iPad. Are you saying I should have those emojis? You should. I think, I think the poutine is being blocked by the uh, American Medical Association. It's, I bet. The heart, <laughs> heart, 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 heart surgeons around the world, are, or maybe they're actually promoting it so they get more work. But according to, Buzz, I it, I feel according like to BuzzFeed, is, Apple has also proposed and will have next year 13 new emojis for those with disabilities. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Thank you, Apple. That's so awesome. Uh, emojis of guide and service dogs, people with canes, individuals signing the word deaf. An ear with a hearing aid, people in wheelchairs and prosthetic limbs. I love that. That's fantastic. I'll what be using add? that. I'll be using that hearing aid emoji a lot. <laughs> I just want to see what a did you say? I wonder if they're going to add one for uh, like a miniature pony service animals because the Americans <laughs> with Disabilities Act only acknowledges two animals that can be trained for as service animals, and believe it or not, the miniature horse is the other one. What? I nope, want a miniature see. horse on the plane with me next oh time. Now, so do say. I. Like that would be awesome. Yeah. I'll ride it through the aisles. I, 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 I still am. I'm thinking of the emotional support, Hamone Barico. I'm really working on that. I'm yes. going to get a little, <laughs> little thing. Well, I'm, I'm, I was I'm so jealous, Leo. I was so jealous. I went to the casino and got some Yamone Barico just so I could ah. be with the spirits. <laughs> jealous. As a, Turns as out, Robichon serves it. It's so as, good. As, as a freelancer, I'm still trying to figure out whether I can get more clicks. Before these new emojis come out and say Apple should, once again, you, you've got a lobster emoji. It's a red lobster, which means that it's been cooked. You want it to be like brownish green, which means it's still alive. Given that there's people who are saying we, you need to anesthetize the, you can't boil these these animals alive anymore. It's cruel. I don't know whether I'll, I'll make more, make more, uh, get more views with publishing that before or being the first one to have to, to write about lobster gate, like after these emojis lobster come out. Lobster gate, lobster gate. We're doing some A-B tests. <laughs> um, These people want to see a lobster. You said you went to the casino. Did you go to Joël Robichon? I went to Atelier. You went to the Atelier? At the casino because I know they have a so giant jealous. They do. in Berica right at the counter. They do. In, in, uh, oh. in Paris, they had one. And I had yeah. some. Yeah. And they give you so much. It is so good. So good. Well, they ought to for that price. I know. <laughs> oh, man. Now I have two reasons to visit you, Renee. <laughs> yes. Bagels, Bagels and, and the Atelier. Oh, yeah. man. We'll do it, Leo. Yeah. Lisa, can we go to <laughs> Montreal? We could do the show from Montreal. Yes. Totally. Why don't we do that? You Just don't try to leave late on late from the airport. Why? They stop. They stop flights at like six thirty or seven o'clock. Civilized and, nation. I know. I was just like I had to get. It's I remember I had CAC. to get to DC or something from Montreal, and I was just like, "What?" We <laughs> just don't have a lot of flights, Alex. It's not no, that we but stop. it was like, but we don't have many. It was like by my flight was being delayed or it was going to be canceled yeah. or something, and then they were like, "All the flights are are." Sorry. Uh, no, there's no flight after seven you p.m. or leave. something like that. I you was like, stuck here. Why would you ever want to leave? Well. You must stay in Montreal. Bars, they open to three, but not the airports. Yep. Your prime minister is so handsome. And when you ask him a question about quantum computing, he asks you which type. I only know of two. <laughs> hey, uh, what's a good time of year to go to Montreal, Rene? Uh, I mean, it really depends. So, like, like, it's really cold in the winter, but you have, like, ice hotels. But then in the spring and fall, it's nice, especially the fall because the, the leaves, you know, change color. It looks Ooh. really nice. Uh, in the summer, we have jazz festivals and comedy festivals, but Ooh. it's hot. So it really depends on what you oh, like. Oh, man. I think I've only been there in the fall, and it's been amazing. Yeah. Is it too soon for me to go on vacation again? <laughs> it's never <laughs> too soon. Here's an amazing story. Apple Watch apps instantly wait 64-bit thanks to a little checkbox in Xcode called Enable Bitcode. According to the Accidental Tech Podcast... It was quietly responsible for the smooth launch of software for the Series 4 last month. So Xcode 7, back in 2015, added support for Bitcode. You're going to have to explain this uh, to me, Renee. Do you, I presume you understand this. My all. favorite part of the story is that the headline said obscure, and then Chris Latner tweeted out, "Who call, who's calling it obscure? Bitcode. Okay. So Bitcode is like uh, pseudocode, right? It's, a, it's not machine language. It's an intermediate 
Yeah, so to. basically the developer uploads to Apple and then Apple creates uh, bit code versions that are specific to the processor. So for example, uh, if you get a new iPhone, you'll notice you have to re-download your apps. They don't just transfer over because it's downloading the versions of the apps that are compiled for the processor that you're running but on that But the developer device. didn't do that. No, Apple does Apple it automatically. Did. Yeah, and people were saying early on that, oh, it's not really, it's just a pain in the butt and there's no real benefit to it. And then Apple buy it at its time, you know, boat its time, one of those conjugations, and said, here, 64-bit. Boom! Pushed down. So yeah. if you wrote an app for the Apple Watch and you checked that box, enabling bit yes. code, Apple didn't receive the com fully compiled version of your app. It received a bit code version of your app, which it then transcompiles into different versions depending on which yeah. series watch you're using. Yeah, and I think I believe it was mandatory for Apple Watch. I don't think I think it was optional for iPhone for a while. I think it was mandatory for Apple Watch if memory serves. And the idea was that Apple could make the idea was to sort of future proof it against future optimizations, so that even like so you would not have to go back and make changes to your apps. Apple could deliver some of those changes, right. especially at the lower processor levels for you uh, at deployment. So the new Apple Watch has an S4 64-bit S4 processor in it. And the rumor has it that it's actually running iPhone efficiency cores, maybe like the, the Chinook class cores, which is a real big deal if that turns out to be true. <laughs> it, it, I have to say, it is absolutely the case that everything is faster. Laps yeah. launch faster. Everything is like like it should be, like in real time instead of wait, wait, wait. Yeah. And I just assumed that was a faster processor. But in fact... It's not merely a faster processor. It's 64-bit code. It's amazing that we went, like the original Apple Watch ran at the thermal limits of that casing, and now we've gotten to this just the scant four, four versions later. It's really remarkable. I I love this watch. Like, like <laughs> I, 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 I got to say. Is that I, I do too. And I, I, was like, I was really skeptical on that. No, the I was like, watch. I've talked about it before on the show. I was like, ah, it solves enough problems that I buy it. You know, like, like I was like, the first, the first, all the first four ones, I, you know, it was kind of like, ah, it's okay. You know, like I can, I like I the timer. I stopped wearing it if, right through series two. I, I was kind of like, I like the timer and there's enough things that I didn't, I didn't like it as much as my citizen. I have a, I had a Navahawker. I still have one laying around somewhere, but um, the, I was like, oh, I still don't like it as much as my other my other watch, um, but it still has things I need, so I just keep wearing it. And I figured eventually Apple will figure this out, and it'll be better because I this is okay. It's, it's still better than anything else I've had. I mean, as far from a service perspective, I have learned to turn almost all the notifications off because they drive me crazy. Oh, I um, turn them all on. I love it. Oh, I hate it. I want to know what's going on in the I world. Not. I love the new de de deliver quietly feature. So a lot of the notifications I used to get, I just hit the deliver quietly, and now I can go to the notification center and see them, but they're not going beep 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 on right. my devices all the time right yeah i'm in a lot of meetings where there's people that demand like absolute attention <laughs> so it's you know you get you you know you looking even looking down is seen as a across yeah. well that's why you don't see them like you don't see them until you go to a notification center and ask yeah. to see what you missed yeah so i just i don't like i just like to stay focused and so i i uh so i turned all those things off but when i got this i was like i don't know if it'll be that much better but i can't you know can't keep on doing the show yeah. without it on and, and i'm just like i put you know of course i use the most complex you know the yeah, I like the new infograph. infograph. The new infograph. Really like infograph. I've got infograph. it all. I've got it all lined up, and I'm like, I really, I just it's the best watch I've had now. Like it's it's finally gotten to that point where I'm like, okay, I really I really like the watch because before it was just kind of like oh, it was useful, kind of, but it's great. <laughs> Love it. Uh, speaking of great, you bought an iPhone. Did you buy yeah. which one? Did you buy? I got the uh, the Max. The Max. Max. Yeah, X, or, yeah. and I I Are shot you? I shot a video. You shot a video. You put it on Twitter. Not with your new iPhone. I don't do that right. No, your I, old iPhone. So the X, I felt kind of guilty because I, you know, it was like, it's kind of like going out on a, I'm going to go out on a date with someone else and then, ha and then, and then doing it the with, video with I shot you, the you video with the X. Replacement. I shot the video with replacement. the X. What? Yeah, exactly. This is what <laughs> you're about to go to somebody else, you know? And so, uh, so anyway, so yeah, my, I, I shot it with the X, um, but this was, they, so evidently you can go into the Apple store and say, I'd like to have a glass uh, I, I'd like to have a glass protector for my for my uh, for my phone. And I just said it thinking they were going to give me a case. I didn't realize he was going to bring out this whole like Belkin made this thing. I think just for Apple. Maybe it's for the other cell phone companies as well. But it's like a whole application process. Is it uh, is it like uh, when you when you go to the House of Beef in San Francisco and they wheel out the <laughs> Zeppelin? It's kind of like that. It's like <laughs> they, they were like, oh yeah, we got this thing, and they but but they don't. It doesn't even come in a box. It comes in like a like a piece of plastic. They just kind of open it up and and put it in, and and so, but it is. Uh, it's the fastest way I've ever seen that. Well, not only protector. is it fast, it now looks like it was literally designed to be on the phone. Like it was when it the, fits when perfectly. it was finished. It 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 fits perfectly. It's perfectly registered. There's no bubbles. 
And uh, now, like, it's gone from, you know, there's an argument about whether, you know, you should, uh, my my uh, former coworker at, at ILM, Stu Ashwood, was like, you're, you're putting a plastic on your couch all the time. And, and uh, it is kind of like that. I get that. But at the same time, the, uh, uh, it's, I like, I, I don't like scratches. So if I scratch it, I want to be able to pull it off and put another one on. And if, and in the past, I've lost a little bit on it. And so I've decided sometimes I don't want it on there. Um, this is the first time, like, it is perfect. It is, it is a perfect application of, of this process. And it's done at the Apple Store when you buy it. You can, I guess you can go in and just do it if you've already bought it. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's like 40 bucks. And uh, the, I guess the process is free. But, but it's $40. To, <laughs> it's $40 to buy it. Um, but it's a... Uh, I think I was just more excited when he, I just thought I was going to buy a, love a, a screen applicator and then There's, I was going to go through the, you, you know, should put this on Reddit because it is uh, one of those videos is just kind of curiously satisfying. It is. I will to watch you. him do this. Yeah. It's like, it's like a Polaroid for your screen. It's kind of remarkable. Yeah. It yeah, is. There's, there's, something, there's something about, I know Alton Brown hates like unitasker tools, but there is something about a bespoke tool that takes, just only does one thing, but that one thing is incredibly complicated without it. And once you have it, it's like you want to do this all day long. It's so it's easy. Like Charles like, Emerson Winchester the third. <laughs> one thing so, at a time, very, very well. It was so, it was, it was always so stressful to do this and you never want to do it yourself. You, you, and it's always been this thing and, 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 when you look at that device and you look at the whole process, they spent a lot of money and a lot of time figuring out how to well, do this well. because the biggest complaint against screen protectors like that is the it's hard to put them on well. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and so it's it's so uh, they figure out a way to uh, overcome oh, they the it. number one complaint. Odd, oddly, ironically, you have a, an iPhone that is without a doubt the most robust iPhone Apple's ever made. I we had Lindsay Turrentine, editor in chief of CNET, on Sunday on Twit. She uh, CNET did a drop test on the iPhone XS. They could not. They could barely scratch it. They could f not break so, it. Some people have. I would still be super. I mean, like some people. Well, don't have do it them. on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and and even that. with testing, it's so so much depends on angle and what surface it's on, and if there's any like small perturbances on that surface that could cause it. You know, it's so it. it yeah, you can break those things, and you could. I, I've dropped mine. No, well, I'm not gonna. I want to knock wood real hard now. I've dropped <laughs> mine, and it's fine. But I, I have seen them drop and break, so always yeah. be careful. Also, also realize that uh, even though it might look fine, you could have created micro fractures. That mean like the next time you drop it, it's just gonna be like a Hollywood special effect. It's gonna explode. Okay. Like, don't use it as a diving camera. It is water resistant. Yeah, don't, don't, I mean, don't, <laughs> don't use it as a diving remember, camera. Remember, remember that that Darwin, that famous Darn Darwin Award about the, the the lawyer giving the tour every every month to like new interns in the law office, saying, "and and these windows on our 80th floor office are so strong. Look, I can run straight into it, and it won't go through, and nothing happens." And it worked the first like 30 times, but the 31st time, he wound up being an internet meme. Here's, so, here's Vanessa uh, dropping it. Uh, no. Thank you. Here's Vanessa dropping it over and over again. And, oh, this is a shot from the iPhone while it's being dropped. She dropped it about four what feet, the, something like mean. that. It's just mean. I can't watch it. I know. It's hard to watch, oh, isn't it? Oh, God. But Lindsay said she she saw the phone after the fact, and it was barely, yeah. barely anything wrong oh. with it. It even landed face down on the concrete. Eesh. Oh, What's interesting this the, year is that usually, like ke with chemistry, you've got a balance. Like the more scratch resistant you make it, the easier it is to shatter. The right. easier, the more shatter resistant, the easier it is to scratch. And Apple said it's, it's tried its best with Corning to really improve both those things this year. Um, I don't want to put it to test, but I'm happy that if it does save more people more time, that's a benefit. See, and I don't even like see the little nick that she's showing there. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> she rubbed it out. It's going, right, it's right. going away. See, I don't even like those. I, <laughs> I typically scratch mine with the back camera of the other phone. Like I'll have both phones, and for some reason, yeah. I'll use the like one camera will scratch the other phone. All right. Yeah. You'll so get, we're you'll not get, recommending yeah, this at home. I'm just pointing out yeah. that you the, put the, a the screen protector on a screen that's less you have, likely you have to no scratch. Idea, you have no idea how much grit is in your pocket until you have like two yeah, phones in there. Where it, you yeah. One piece of grit gets between them and then they start to shh, and that's when you get scratches. Yeah, yeah. But I like, you know, I like, I've never had a screen protector. I just, I do keep a, a, a case on mine, but I kind of like what the, 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 what on the Antiques Roadshow they refer to as good, honest wear. You know, I'm not, the, the 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 thing I'm one of the things I'm happiest with about my now four year old camera is that now there's like the paint is like sort of rubbed off on the hard corners and it says this is this was this has seen some stuff man. 
So I don't mind a little bit of nicks and scratches. So Johnny still- I've awarded the 2018 Stephen Hawking Fellowship from the Cambridge Union Society. I was one of the most influential individuals in modern technology. He will speak during the Michaelmas term at Cambridge University's debating chamber. In case you're, in case you're there for Michaelmas. <laughs> Hi thee to Stay the, for the Ive. debating chamber. Sir Johnny. Where he will be first, speaking. First the Blue Peter Gold Badge and now this. <laughs> oh, it looks like the... The debating it's, chamber looks kind of like if you if you've ever seen the, uh, yeah. the British legislature, yeah, like Parliament, <laughs> like Parliament, yeah. Uh, Oct- we now learn are learning that in August tenth, the FBI searched uh, the home of a suspect in Columbus, Ohio, during a child abuse investigation. They had a search warrant, and as part of that search warrant, FBI agents ordered the suspect to face the iPhone and trigger face. ID. Yeah. And it's a little bit, uh, the, it's, it's a little extra creepy or excuse me, problematic because this wasn't just them testing the limits of a warrant. The warrant actually explicitly uh, spelled out, here's what we might want to get. And it will include biometric information used for uh, collecting this data. So it was all spelled out in the warrant. And as, as the, the, this guy was in the position of, there's no way I can turn this down. This is yeah. spelled out. Apparently so, uh, police are now using boilerplate language in warrants. To cover Face ID, yeah. now, they have done fingerprint with Touch ID in the past, well, and, and and it's you hit the power button twice. Is that right, or you hit? Yeah, uh, no, you squeeze the phone. Squeeze the you phone. Squeeze both, but yeah, there's, there's two sides. And so, I mean, that's just something to know. I mean, I'm glad this person got caught. Evidently, they got caught. Yeah, yeah child exactly. pornography. So I'm not. I'm not saying that they should have done it. But if you're worried about and it I, on your own, squeezing the phone on either side before you hand it to someone can be done fairly subtly, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then it it, yeah. it it removes that. And now. The other thing that I think that I don't know if we saw in the news here is that I guess in New Zealand they're passing a law that says that that you can pay five thousand dollar if they, if they ask for your electronics uh, you can pay a five thousand dollar fine if you don't hand it over. Now they say it's got to be reasonable, but remember that New Zealand is they part have of- to have probable cause in effect uh, uh, to yeah. suspect you of wrongdoing. It's the Custom and Excise Act of twenty eighteen comes into effect today in New Zealand. And uh, you can't refuse a digital search. You cannot yep. refuse a digital search. If you do, you'll be fined up to five thousand dollars. Your device will be seized, and they'll search it for you <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, New so. Zealand and Australia are both having these kind of problems, and worldwide, it's customs that are trying. It's it's customs that are at the bleeding edge of this because historically, for hundreds of years, there's been a, the principle of law that. The country has a right to control anything that's going inside, going into the country, and that can extend to if you're carrying documents, we have the right to ask for those documents if you're carrying them in the country, or we have the right to simply tell you that you don't get to come in. So this is this stuff is going to be tested, and it's also and by the way, it's perfectly fine to be incredibly conflicted about a lot of this. Uh, I'm very very bothered by the uh, by the requirement to unlock and decrypt documents that you have encrypted because i think that uh, part of the uh, an additional bill of uh, member of the bill of rights should be that we have the right to keep secrets from uh, from everybody else if we want to however it's okay it's also okay to, excuse me it's important to notice that because this phone was unlocked it's not only got the they got the evidence against this person who was trafficking excuse me who was in possession of child pornography but also connections to the people other people in the pipeline of where he got it from other people he might have been swapping stuff with and so it's again it's per i'm so conflicted about a lot of the stuff i just keep falling back on the basic things where the, the basic principle that we've just chosen to be a society where it's okay where we'd much rather uh retain personal freedoms and let the occasional guilty person go free for lack of evidence than treat everybody walking down the street as though they're a potential criminal and have fewer criminals on the street I, that's I the choice we made I think I think the mistake the governments are making. I mean, I I think that they have the right to do what they're going to do, obviously. But but I think that the mistake that they're making is by doing things that are overt like this. They are creating a sensitivity towards privacy where I think that they were actually doing 
they were doing pretty well before they started coming up over the radar. So they, you know, as oh, far as gathering this information. Point. And so they had all this information and if they just quietly did it yeah. and didn't push, didn't push the envelope, they wouldn't have everybody thinking about it and they wouldn't have companies building entire business plans around thwarting oh, that's it. That's an excellent and, point. And so they're, they're actually going to damage their ability to do it. And then they're going to have to, you know, then, then what's going to happen is, is they're going to have to write a law that is, that will appear to the public as horrible. And they're going to end up with a, you know, the so, you know they're going to end up with this huge fight with their population where before they did that, they were actually getting an inc I mean, more data than they've ever had before. I mean, they have this crystal clear, you know, HD v view of us. And there's like three or four pixels that aren't there. And they're, and they're trying to force those last three or four pixels. And they're going to lose half of it in, in the middle of all of this. Or they're going to end up in, you know, near revolution when people start saying, well, you can't you can't keep on doing this because... You know, what's going to happen with New Zealand? I mean, with all of this, New Zealand's part of a in information, uh, part of an information network with the United States. So, you know, New Zealand, Australia, and a couple other countries. So, you know, what, what will happen is, is that the, the you know, intelligence agencies of the United States will say, we need you to search this person when they land. Do we, we need their, their electronics. And what they'll do is they'll pull the electronics for New Zealand and they'll send it back to the United States. You know, like that's, that's how this is all going <laughs> to, you know, how, yeah. how it's going to come through. So uh, the... Um, so I think that the, the governments are making a mistake by making it such an overt, um, process, uh, and because they're not going to win, you know, they're not, you know, like this is not, well, you know, they, I, I think that, I think they eventually are because it's, it's, it's the worst kind of arms race because the, uh, if, if we can't, if we can't stop a country, if we can't travel with a phone or even carry a phone with us in a car that might have a busted, ted, uh, busted headlight without worrying that that phone could be searched. Uh, the step one is okay. Now there's a shortcut that will lock the phone and allow refuse to allow it to be uh, unlocked with biometrics. The next step, and then they will find a way legally around that to simply say, well, you, you're going to have to provide the biometrics to open this up. And then the next step is going to be for Apple. I, I hope Apple and Google to say, okay, here is a here is here is the Jason Bourne hidden feature. If you hit the power button five times in a row, it will actually delete the encryption key on your phone and render all the content of it unrecoverable. It will put it right back into factory mode, which is something that I would, that if I were traveling to certain hostile countries, I would certainly consider no, doing. No, I, I it's agree. a lot easier. I agree so with you. That's, so that's what, and then, and then, then what happened, then the fear after that is now they're going to say they have the, the only way for them to protect that source of protect, potential source of evidence is to make it illegal for phones to be encrypted or to insist that there be a backdoor that cannot be defeated. Uh, so I'm very, very worried about what we're going to see over the next five or 10 years as uh, law enforcement who are, again, I have so much sympathy for them. This is, so, there's so much work that they can't do if people have the ability to, have acts have routine access to files that government cannot possibly locate or or, de or decrypt, uh, but they're going to get increasingly desperate or increasingly frustrated. And all we need is the right people or the wrong people in the in the lawmaking seats to make really horrible anti privacy laws even worse. But I think, and again, that that that, and I think that they were doing. We, we do have to. I, I do agree with you. We have to balance this. I mean, the reason that we as I mean, I work a in a lot of places around the world and the, and the, <laughs> and some of them are pretty rough. Um, the, the reason that we live in houses without fences all the way around us. And we, the reason that, we, that every block, there's places that I work where every block, there's someone with an AK 47 or a, or a M 16 or whatever is holding, a, you know, like looking out the reason that we have that in the United, that we don't have that in the United States is because of all this intelligence, you know, because of what they're doing with the phones, because of the, um, what the NSA does. Like, let's just be clear that that is why we can have the life that we have in the United States. So we have to always take that into account when we talk through this is that, that them, they, they ha they're they having that ability is is what doesn't have a bomb going off every, uh, yeah. you know, that every every day, you know, somewhere in the United States and doesn't have things that seem very soft um, be attacked. So, so th these things are, it's a very important conversation. I just, I'm not saying that they shouldn't, be getting the data i'm just saying that by overtly you know going after this um you know i think that they are risking getting into this huge push because i think that they will have trouble making those laws because they un, un, you know until there's a huge you know what what will happen is the, the, the when that will happen is after a huge terrorist act because they'll use that as the the next reason to to go down that path they won't be able to do it just randomly because it's you know and that's what they try to do with san bernardino uh, you know, as they they want to use that to you know to to close up this little to close up the gaps that they that they want to that they want to go through. But without that, I mean, people are going to be concerned, and they should be concerned about. I mean, it's you, you the data is something that 
it's fine when you think that everybody's doing the right thing. But what happens, you know, we've already had reports of intelligence agencies getting a hold of that and, the, and individual human beings taking advantage of the fact that they have that data to look at things that they're not supposed to be looking at. That's the, that's the problem you get into. I'm in the mood for some olive oil. I don't know about you. But after oh, man. that, <laughs> I want some. No, 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 it'll make that go down easier. What? <laughs> some nice, flavorful. The bread? Tres Pontes Premium Quality Extra Virgin Olive Oil. That's what I'm talking about. We were in uh, Spain. Uh, I think Spain is the number one olive oil producer, maybe number two after Italy in the world. And we went to this uh, beautiful. Oh, no, I guess it was France. We were in France, in Provence, and a beautiful place where they made olive oil, and they had this 300-year-old olive tree, and we tasted all the olive oil, and they said, oh, no, we are very proud. It's less than 0.4% acidity, and I thought, you know, I've got uh, better olive oil at home, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Hand-picked from the Casablanca Valley in Chile. It's Tres Pontes, less than 0.2%. Actually, in most cases, much less than 0.2%. It is the sweetest, smoothest olive oil. And if you love the Tres Pontes coffee that we talk about all the time, as much as I do, you're going to love this gourmet extra virgin olive oil. So this is actually becoming their mission at Tres Pontes, to search the world to find the best small single-family farms that have never imported into the United States and to create a great farm-to-table experience for us. This, all this amazing olive oil comes from Jose Miguel Arnaz's orchard in Chile, in the Casablanca Valley. It is one of the few valleys in Chile with optimum conditions for producing a premium Evo. As with everything Tres Pontas does, there's a, I think I could do it right now, there's a QR code we could scan on the olive oil bottle so you could see exactly where the, where the olive trees were. Let's see, open in Google Maps. There they are, the olive trees that this olive oil came from. I love it. Right there in the uh, in that that particular olive orchard, right there. Acidity is it's actually one quarter what it has to be to be called extra virgin olive oil, because they do something very important. They extract it by natural means. They squeeze it. No chemicals. No heat. They prioritize aroma flavor, and quality over yield. They use five, five different premium olive varietals. Uh, the flavor profile, I don't know, Alex, you've tried it. We've sent some out to you my, guys too. My, my, even my kids like it, which is not something I expected, but, you know, they, we, we dip... The, the, it's the, so the, good the you can dip bread in it. The, the, the pre-dinner the, the pre thing now is, is which I, I don't usually eat very much bread, um, and uh, is dipping the bread in, into, the, into, the, uh, into the olive oil. And we didn't do it before. I mean, it's just no, so it really good. Teaches the, kids, you all yeah, the kids like it a lot. And of course, this is a little balsamic vinaigrette or a little... Oh, uh, so good. Uh, <sighs> Well, I'll often have like uh, I'll have like a I'll fix myself like a real lunch, and then for dinner I will it will just be a plate of cheeses, <laughs> a, a half loaf of Italian bread that I got <laughs> that I got at the store like the the day before, and just a little saucer that of really good. Trace, yeah. just, and that it's like really good. <laughs> and, yeah. and and so instead of like a instead of cooking and b instead of adding another eight hundred calories or a thousand yeah. calories, it's like yeah. very continental and it's tasty and it's like. And yeah, it's when you when you taste when you taste the goods. It, there, there are things like must like mustards and olive oils. The difference between like the cheap stuff and the good stuff is within range of most people, and it's the different. The improvement is disproportionate in re, in relationship to the amount of extra money you spend. It's I like when you buy agree. really good olive yeah. oil or really good mustard. It's like my God, now now I, now I'm buy, I'm buying the store brand ham, but now my mouth does not know it because this. <laughs> Well, I'll be honest, uh, you get this at such a good price because we got a great discount for you. I don't just use it for, like, putting on salad or eating bread. I use it for cooking, too. I have a squeeze bottle I, I keep loaded with Tres Pontes olive oil because I cook with olive oil, almost everything with olive oil now. And I think it's better for you, and it sure does taste good. Sign up for Here's how you can get a great deal on the best olive oil you've ever had in your life. Sign up for an olive oil subscription. Save 10% off any bottle you select. And look, they have the giant ones, the little ones, your choice. If you wish, you can mix and match this with Tres Pontes Coffee, too, by the way. That, 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 uh, that uh, mm -hmm. discount applies so you can have a subscription to coffee and olive oil. And do this at tresepontas.com slash MacBreak, T-R-E-S-P, 
P-O-N-T-A-S dot com slash MacBreak. Use the code MacBreak. You'll get another 10% off. So you're now getting 20% off every bottle of olive oil in your subscription. And that makes this totally affordable. I grew up in a house because my mom cooked Italian right. where we had a can, one of those big cans of all, Italian olive oil next to the stove all the time. For me, it's Chile right. now. I tell you, not, even mom loves this better. You you got to get the subscription to get the discount, though, by the way. So if you want the discount, sign up for the subscription. And, and by the way, it's easy to cancel if you decide. I have enough olive oil now. Uh, I never ha seem to have enough olive oil. <laughs> uh, and you get an additional 10% off. You could, you could, If you want just one bottle, order it on Amazon. You won't get the discount. But you want the 20% off, go to trespuntas.com slash MacBreak. Use the offer code MacBreak and get the best olive oil you've ever had. I, I've i talked to the Trace Pontas guys, you know, and the, they originally just were going to do coffee. They found this olive oil and they said, um, all right, we're going to do olive oil. And I said, you really could make a business out of farm to table, single family farm, getting the best ingredients somewhere in the world and offering them to our audience. And I think they might start doing that. I hope they yeah. do. But they've got two to start, the coffee and the olive oil. And they really are good at finding this amazing, amazing stuff. And thanks, we should really thank Jose Miguel Arnez for making the best olive oil I've ever had. Tresapuntas.com slash Mac break. Just checking uh, Paul Thorat's Twitter because, as you know, Microsoft is Ooh. having an event right now. So far, uh, nothing to report. Wait a minute, three new tweets have just come in. Um, no USB-C. No USB-C on <laughs> Surface Pro. That sucks. Okay, that's it. However, Windows 10 version 1809 is coming out today. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, well, we'll have to find out more. Uh, Does we'll that mean it has a lightning port? I'm very confused. No, it has that <laughs> stupid Surface Connect. Yeah. It's got to <laughs> Uh-oh. It's got to for mobile. Panos Panay took away Thorat's Surface, and it's getting weird now. Uh-oh. It's the Surface the Pro The roadblock tackles him. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. Let's get our picks of the week, and I'll keep uh, keep you posted uh, on this, starting with Renee Ritchie. So my pick, uh, if you're familiar with Linea, which is a great iPad art application, I mean, you can take notes with it, you can do art with it, you can do brain boggling with it, almost anything that you can use an Apple Pencil for on the iPad Pro, you can use in Linea. It's by the Icon Factory, who have been making phenomenal Love apps stuff. since time immemorial. They're finally getting out of the Twitter business, I guess, huh? Uh, well, I think Twitter is getting them out of the Twitter business. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, they, they've got it. They've, with the advent of the iPhone XS, and especially, I guess, the iPhone XS Max, they've made a version for the iPhone. It's called Linea Go, sort of oh. like Teen Titans Go or oh. Pokemon Go. Um, and it's it's just great. Of course, the first thing I did was draw Batman because that's the nice. first thing that I do with <laughs> that's any your test. That's that's my test. Uh, I wish I really wish there was Apple Pencil support for the iPhone XS Max. Of course, that's not the Icon Factory's fault. That's Apple's fault. Uh, but what you can do even with your finger or a regular stylus is still miraculous. It's got they've taken the same sort of really good minimal but discoverable tools and they've made them all available to you. And I've always loved it's one of the things I like about the Galaxy Note. I've always loved the idea of a small like digital field notes or drawing book in in my pocket and Linea. Uh, really delivers with that. Oh, it's just, it's this. really good for artists. It's really good for notes. Nice. Um, oh, they're all a bunch of artists. So when you look at what Ged or what, you know, some of the other people there are doing, um, or uh, I'm going to blank on his name, uh, Rob, uh, who does all the Star Trek storyboards. He's been putting up some of his pictures oh, yeah. that he's been yeah. doing on it. And he is just so good. Uh, so if you have any artistic tendencies and you want to take advantage of that gorgeous, ginormous, almost tiny tablet scale iPhone XS Max screen, Linea Go is an amazing app to do it with. Two ninety nine dollars in American dollars yeah. in the app store. I have today. such a strong recommendation to have a good art app on your phone. Uh, because yeah. uh, it's because you'll, y yes, you can't draw a lick for your, to save your life, but if you have that on your phone and you get, start to get in the habit of like while you're waiting for the bus or while you're on your uh, on the train in your commute home to just sketch, if you just get into the habit of instead of doing Facebook or or, or social media or whatever, if you use that use that to unwind, you'll uh, two years later you will have forgotten that you've gotten into this habit, and then you'll be able to see your first picture and then your most recent picture, and you're like, I'll be damned! All I had to do was draw for 20 minutes a day for two years, and now I'm kind of good. Well, yeah. 
I was surprised it had just uh, bought the, it. The I did too. I was, <laughs> in the time that you've done it, I, I bought it, opened it, and started drawing pictures. Uh, the I was surprised at how good the the um, pressure sensitivity is with the yeah. just with my finger. Like I'm really getting, you know, I can really. And the have pencil a lot of tool is so good. I use the Judge Art apps by pencil tools a lot. It's just one of my things, and the pencil yep. tool is really good. It also has a zip line tool that draw, helps you draw straight yes. lines. I like that because <laughs> I can't even draw a straight line. Nice. Good pick. That's great. Here is a, speaking of picks, a picture from the Surface event, Mary Jo Foley taking of Paul Therott and Brad Sams, and that is just unholy. I, <laughs> I am so glad I'm missing this. Showing a lot of leg there. <laughs> that's a that's lot of leg, boys. Uh, apparently both have a kind of a fascination with slip-ons and half socks, so... Wait a minute. Is Rubino not working? I'm just checking this crowd. Uh, let's see who's there. I see I Tom's see, guide. I see Nilay Patel, Patel there. Yeah. Uh, is that, where yeah. is this? This is in, uh, I think it's New York, right? Yeah. I think so. It's a small room. That's it. They're not streaming it or we would be covering it, but they're not yeah. streaming it. So we'll just have to give you updates. It looks like someone's living room. That's. It is. And I think that's well, what Microsoft is saying, they, they, by the way, according to Mary Jo oh, Foley, so. is they want the tech to disappear uh -huh. It's a it's a new vision. Microsoft it's is framing Surface Windows and Office Vision with modern life services. They wanna they wanna did they, did they disappear at the rose pant legs too? <laughs> they disappeared as pant legs. Hoping Microsoft to re repair its tarnished yeah. image with consumers by trying to position its cross platform apps and services, making them more productive. Uh actually this is an older article, but this is just, you know, the next step in this with the new Surface. All right, we'll we'll keep we'll keep you covered. We'll keep you we'll keep you up to date. Alex Lindsay, pick of the week. So uh, it's coming out this month. Oh. <laughs> I think, I'm, I'm not sure if it's shipping yet, uh, but this is uh, Maxon. Of course, is my favorite 3D app, and um, so uh, Maxon uh, Cinema 4D is uh, the thing that I use to put stuff together, and they've got great updates. One of the things I'm most excited about, and this will, I'm not going to get into all the inside baseball stuff. That's a little crazy but node-based materials um now what that means is, is that you can you can basically build very very complex materials that are that allow you to basically say i'm going to take this attribute from this surface and then reconnect it i wish uh, i mean i've done a lot of node-based stuff and so it's uh you know it's how you use the high-end compositors and it's something that lets you build um very complex texture maps um that will really you know fill out um uh just a lot of details that are very hard to do otherwise with layers. Standard layers mean I'm going to take this thing, I'm going to put it on top of this, and and being able to randomly pull together, not randomly, but but really have full control over how you pull these textures together. I'm going to take this part out of this and put it into, into here and combine these into another node. And and so nodal, nodal compositing is something we've done for years, but nodal texture maps have been available, but not available on Cinema 4D. And so not available to me. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, so anyway, it's, it's, um, it is incredibly powerful. They've also, uh, we do a lot of stuff where we import CAD, CAD drawings. Um, so we're, we actually oftentimes start with uh, laser scans or LIDAR, which we talked about on screensavers at one point. Right. Those go into those become CAD drawings, and then trying to get them into cinema to render them has been a little bit of a lift, um, and that's gone away. And then the other big thing that I'm, you know, there's a lot of better rendering. Uh, another thing that they've done really well, and again, these are things that I'm probably more interested in than anybody else, is the, uh, the motion tracking has gotten a lot better. Now, I remember, I'm old enough, and I've been doing this long enough, to remember when motion tracking was something that was done by a person by hand, um, in the, you know, when I worked on star Wars, that's what was done. People actually looked at the camera move and they tried to figure it all out. Wow. Then it was $10,000, uh, a copy to have a piece of software do it for you that did pretty well. Um, the idea that now it is easy to use and just sitting in your 3d app and it will, that it will track the, the, it'll, um, it'll do the match moving for you. Uh, it will let you do what's called screen reconstruction. So it takes all the points that it used to do the tracking to build a 3d model that you can have 3d stuff interact with. Uh, it's, um, and, and what they, they, they had all that working, but it was a little, a little bit of a lift to use it. Um, and, they, and what they really spent a lot of time doing is uh, making it a lot easier to use, um, which is what's something that cinema 4d, you know, basically if you're doing, 3D, the reason that we use Cinema 4D a lot is because we can ramp new artists up. It's not that it, you know, you can ramp new artists up very fast. And so if you're trying to learn something, it's worth downloading the demo, playing with it, doing some of the tutorials. There's the lynda.com stuff actually uh, uh, is really good. And there's a guy named EJ Hassenfrost who does a lot of um, uh, great 
um, tutorials on how to use it. So anyway, that's that's my uh, Cinema 4D uh, worth checking out. It's it's always worth just downloading and playing with a demo, even if you don't know if you're going to do 3D, just because it's it's fun. It's it's 3D. <laughs> it's easy. Microsoft has unveiled the Surface Pro 6 in matte black, quad core, and the Surface Book 2, also in matte black. Mm. And now, Andy and I go <laughs> from WGBH in Boston. Yes, uh, this is uh, my pick is uh, one of those uh, is something that I was just announced today. So obviously I haven't tried it. It's new on Indiegogo, but it's a sequel to an int what it was an interesting, but I think kind of not quite their writing tool. Uh, it's called the Traveler uh, from the folks at FreeWrite. Uh, it is a word processor, meaning that it is a it is a keyboard, it is a screen. Uh, and software for editing text. Uh, it has Wi-Fi, but all you can do with the Wi-Fi is automatically sync the stuff you've written to your Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever account. Uh, it has no no web browser, not even a micro browser. Uh, I'm not even sure if it has spell check. Uh. But the idea the idea of this is that it is optimized to be uh, a writing word processor tool. Uh, so to that if to that end it has a really nice like two millimeter throw keyboard it has a, a two to four weeks of battery life they promise because uh, it uses e-ink displays instead of uh, lcd or oled uh, and i've used i've used the predecessor to it it's actually really really cool to write on an uh, on an e-ink display that's it's like the the display on your kindle it really does feel like you're just typing uh what i like about what i like about this is that they seem to have learned a lot of lessons from the first one. The first one was kind of cute and kind of ador it's it was you, you feel as though uh, as, as as a prejudiced, bigoted person full of failures, my personal failures myself. I, I this, this is a comment about me, not about people who bought the original one. I imagine that people who bought it spent more time talking about why they think this is the best way. You know, because I don't like Facebook. I don't need the Facebook. It was very, very ostentatious and showy. And I didn't. it didn't have all, some features that I think were really, really good for writers to have. This one is, instead of being like a, like a manual, t the size and weight of like a compact manual typewriter, it really is like a keyboard and a screen that folds down on top of that keyboard. So it's even smaller than a laptop. Uh, the has extra editing features that make it uh, less that make it easy to it, it works more like a regular text editor than as something that aggressively doesn't want you to go back and edit things. It's easy to have multiple projects going at the same time. The whole idea of this is just that if you feel as though this is your jam, you know, if you feel as though uh, three to five hundred dollars for a device that is that only does word processing but it will allow you to never have never be stuck with a bad battery never be stuck with a 0.5 millimeter key travel keyboard uh never have any distractions you can just go someplace and do it uh it's an interesting idea i, I haven't pre-ordered it yet uh, they actually made triple their fifty thousand dollar fundraising goal uh today and they just started launch today uh, if you get in early it's about 300 bucks they say it's going to be 600 dollars when they actually ship in june of 2019 uh, I don't think I can see six hundred dollars for this, but for three hundred, for a professional writer or someone who's writing a novel or has a specific project that they want to keep separate mentally from uh, the tools they use for all of their other computing that involves a keyboard, it's very, very interesting. And it's it's at least worth looking at. I like, if nothing else, I love the story that's being told of. We made this one thing that was sort of niche and sort of out of our own heads and this is the second version of that we built after the first one was successful enough to acquire a bunch of fans who were giving us feedback on what they liked what they didn't like and what they wanted to see in the next version so interesting not, not out in time for nano rimo i'm sorry to say but no. Uh, this is an interesting and, and by the thought way, here. Yeah, and and I and I'm, I'm usually I usually am like I, I I lose chest hair out of nerves when there's like a kick, a crowdfunding campaign for something that is tech that involves building a piece of technology. Uh, but these the these this company they also they they've already been through this show once they they've shipped uh, the original uh, free rider uh, and it worked just fine. Uh, so I don't have any doubt that you'll get it in 2019. Maybe not necessarily in June of 2019, because who knows what happens. But it's, you're not going to be waiting three years later for for your device to to arrive. Hmm. But yeah, well, interesting. Uh, I, I want to correct myself. It wasn't a Surface Book. It's a Surface Laptop uh, too that Microsoft has announced. And uh, thanks to Paul Throat, we do have some information about the matte black devices. 
They will be available October 16th. Starting price for Surface Pro 6, $899. Starting price for Surface Laptop 2, which Microsoft says is twice as fast and has 14 and a half hours of battery life, $999. Um, 15 to 1 contrast ratio, uh, too. So that might be a good... That actually might be a very good uh, writing All uh, you device. need is matte yeah. black. I mean, let's be honest now. Yeah. Once they said matte black, the rest is really irrelevant. Yeah. I do think it is kind of amazing <laughs> that the, phones, the phone cost is past the, the tablet yeah. cost. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's like, it's, right. I'm still I'm I'm in that boat. I, I had budgeted money for I haven't bought a new phone in three years. Uh, I bought a I, I bought a refurb uh, Pixel phone I think last summer or the summer before, uh, and so I was I had set aside like seven or eight hundred dollars of my budget that I'm probably gonna buy just to see get whatever's new. And now I'm like I'm kind of more exciting about the tablets that might be coming out from Apple or Google. And I'm like I'd much rather hold on. I, I still love this old phone. I'd much rather keep it for year three or year four and add a really cool Chrome tablet or add the latest version of the iPad Pro to my lineup because, and I hope I might even save some money on the deal because that's where phones are going these days. <laughs> uh, well, thank you everybody for being here. I think we should wrap this uh, puppy up, leave something for next week. Renee Ritchie <laughs> is at imore.com up there in Montreal, home of the bagel. And yes, sir. You can read all his uh, works, including... His uh, coverage of Pokemon Go, as well as his fabulous Vector podcast at imore.com. What's coming up on I on uh, Vector? I've been trying to do a video a day. I haven't quite made it, but I'm I'm working my way towards yeah. it. So I had the whole I did a whole beauty gate thing. I got to talk to Sebastian wow. and some other smart people and did a whole wow. beauty gate video today. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, Alex Lindsay, you find him at the Pixel Core. Easiest way to follow him is on the Twitter at a l e x l i n d. S A Y. After a, a, a sabbatical, uh, I started doing the teardowns again. So if you want to see me complain about uh, <laughs> other people's <Yay>! work, <laughs> a new so, teardown. So the teardown is 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 basically uh, me looking at other people's work, oftentimes broadcast, and either giving you the, what's missing or also um, uh, giving you some inside baseball about why they're doing what they're doing, I love and this. and kind of the whole thought process. I mean, we we've had an opportunity to do a lot of work with a lot of broadcasters and obviously you'll notice from the shows that i have a strong opinion about uh what works and doesn't work <laughs> so uh it's funny i'm not making Give this man a telestrator and stand back yeah it's, uh, well, you'll and, notice that a lot of these people here on cnn are white dudes and, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't get into here's the content that. i don't it's get into the that. content part of it's it i just get into the, the production yeah like yeah, yeah, what's yeah. wrong with this shot yeah i was just talking about the fact that i don't like windows behind people and you know especially and, uh, john Kerry because it emphasizes the yeah, uh, the, the inverse well, and, curvature and a white, of his jaw and a white shirt in front of it and then also i, I got you know the buttons actually given the lighting problems they've done a pretty good job with that Shit. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, and so the um, uh, uh, anyway, so I go, I break down a lot of stuff. Um, I'm kind of moving slowly towards using it as an educational resource as well. So I'm, I'm going to do more where I talk about good what would make better. I'm starting Fantastic. to mix in some other bits and pieces. So if, anyway, if you want, if you like that kind of thing, or you got <laughs> five five minutes to burn, there you go. Andy and Akko, catch him at WGBH in Boston, uh, Public Radio for Boston, and on his website ihnatko.com. Follow him on Flickr. Always great images. What did you post the image that you're going to be uh, showing? Uh, uh, no, I'll probably post it after uh, after uh, ugh, after the gallery is hanged. Um, I'm not I'm not saying that I just I, I just snapped this thing with an iPhone 10 and printed it out on a dot matrix printer. It did it did get a lot of Photoshop Google foo, but that's what that's, you, that's what you do when you. But that, but that's, but that's what you do when you want to do like an arty sort of print. Yeah. It's never, straight. but yeah, I'll, I'll post it and I'll, I'm hoping to write up the whole story because it was, oh, uh, it was, it shows, it teaches you a lot about what, uh, what uh, a phone camera can do and what you can do with the pictures that are taken with it. Excellent. We do Mac break weekly every Tuesday, right after iOS today, usually around 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC. If you want to join us in studio, email tickets at twit.tv. There's no cost. But we'll put a chair out for you. you got to be, of course, in the Petaluma, Northern California area. You can also watch the live stream anywhere in the world at twit.tv slash live. If you do that, join us in the chat room where people of, similar, of a similar bent are watching at the same time. IRC.twit.tv. I'm not saying the chat room's bent, or am I? <laughs> uh, if you can't watch live or be here live, you can always get uh, on-demand versions, audio and video of everything we do on the on the on the network at twit.tv. In this case, twit.tv/mbw. 
best thing to do would be subscribe in your favorite podcast application. That way you'll get it absolutely automatically the minute it's available. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Now back to work because break time is over. Bye-bye. Oh,